<clears throat> Good morning. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes, hello, Jose Luis, I can hear you very well. It's yes. Okay, so now you, 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 it seems that you've been invited to be a... Yeah. Perfect, yes. Okay, so you can, you can share your screen, for instance, right? Yes, uh, I should be able, where is it? Well, okay, uh, mm -hmm. but you can't now, otherwise you will remove the, the, mm -hmm. the presentation that is coming. Okay, yeah. Okay. Good morning, Khaldun, how are you? Good morning, friend. I'm fine, thank you. Great. Sabah al-khair, Khaldun, kifak. Sabah al-khair, habibi. Kif rehli takim barah lal biqa. Wallah, hayyani ba'dni hoon. Anna webin, anna seminar bil biqa u jaw mniyah. La ba'as kani. Wa idha ta'al bardoni, kul anni. Akid, anta bil bil a'atun. Anta b'tarif qasti bil bardoni? حكيت لي اياه مرة ايه حكيت لي اياه لما عذبوني وصحة الامين العام ويشربوا الكل ايه ايه انا اشرب مية روحت بحكي للشيخ اللي بصلي عنده بقول له يا شيخ صار معي هيك 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 ايه قال لي يا سيدي بسيطة انت مجبور فاطلع كفارة ايه احمد نظام بقول له هيك 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 قال لك خيي مدام صفت على كفارة كان شربت لك كاسة <تصفيق> بس ايام حلوه والله ايه ان شاء الله بترجع ان شاء الله بترجع ان شاء الله ايه وي ار توكين اباوت سم ميموريز ان ليبنون خوسي ويز اور فريند علي اولد جود ميموريز اكسلنت ذيس شوز ذات ذيس از ا بيج فاميلي ايه يا فاميلي اتس ا بيج فاميلي الحمد لله سو وي كان هير يو فيري ويل توداي اي سي ذات ذير ار تو هاند ذات ار ريست ديد يو انسر تو اناس اند Al Arabi, or maybe they are also asking to be panelists. Or mean, Onas, Onas. Yes, Onas and uh... Tunisia, Onas. Okay. Yes, you want. To... Yes, Mr. Hello. Sabah al-khair. الو صباح الخير اخي كيف الحال انا خلدون خشمان انا وسهلا انا العربي عريف من تونس وعود السيد حسان الشتي الذي تعذر عليه الحضور بسبب التزام مهني طارق طيب انت راح تقوم مكانه نعم نعم تو يو تيك از بليس تو جيف ذا برزنتيشن ثانك يو اهلا وسهلا اهلا بك Say, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hassan Al Chati will not able to uh, to join us, so Mr. Al Arabi will be uh, uh, presenting the case. Okay. Hello, Jose. Yes, yes, Khaldun. Mr. Al Arabi will be presenting the case from Tunis instead of Hassan. Shatti, because he has some commitment. Ah, but okay. The case will be presented from Anas Tunis. Will it be then in English or in Arabic? Uh, Mr. Uh, again, please, Mr. Al Arabi. Okay, okay. We'll brief you after he will finish يعني, uh, what he says in bullet points. Uh, Just to let everybody understand, okay? Okay, I understand. Yes, yeah, so his presentation will be made in, in Arabic, and then Khaldun, you will summarize in English the presentation. Okay. Uh, sure.
مهندس خلدون صباح الخير خير <تصفيق> مين معي؟ ابو السعيد حميدي اهلا ابو السعيد ويلكم ابو السعيد سلامات سلامات كيف حالك اهلين الله يبارك فيك ربنا يخلي لنا دائما حضورك اون تايم وبيرفكت يعني الله يبارك فيك ربنا الله يخلي لنا اياك اهلا وسهلا ما برد مصباح ست ايناس ست ايناس اذا عندك اضافه عملنا لك انا ميوت ايناس النجار وين ايناس النجار Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we will start. We will start our session after maybe uh, one to two minutes. Uh, inshallah, hope you will enjoy it. Thank you. When uh, dear friends, we are waiting uh, for His Excellency, uh, Mr. Musbah Al-Hilali, the CEO of, uh, of, uh, the, of SONAD and the Chairman of the Board of Aqua, and Her Excellency Shahira, the Ambassador in the Arab Water Ministerial Council. So within two or three minutes, they will be joining us, as they told me on the phone. 
please uh, be patient for a few minutes. Thank you. استاذ رضوان في عندك استفسار لانك عامل ريز هاند اذا عندك استفسار ممكن تعمله من يوتيوب تفضل استفساري كان انه ما كانش في صوت لا احنا ما كنا عاملين ميوت احنا راح نبلش ان شاء الله خلال دقيقه شكرا تمام اوكي صباح الخير صديقي الله يحييك هلا 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 ابو محمد بارك الله فيك اهلا اهلا يا هلا هلا بك شوف اللي بعدي دكتور ابراهيم نفس المشكله ابراهيم السلمان دكتور احنا اصلا كنا اوريدي ميوتد حاليا احنا عم نحكي عم ننتظر الزملاء المتحدثين الاستاذ مصباح والست شهيره ان شاء الله خلال دقائق راح نبلش اذا اي استفسار ثاني بامكانك تعمل انا ميوت استاذ عبد القوي خليفه نفس الشيء دكتور معلك عبد القوي تفضل أنا بس برحب الزملاء كلهم وأخونا خلدون وأنا معاكم هون إن شاء الله بإذن الله شكرا حبيبي أنت دائما بالقلب ودائما معنا دكتور أنت روحي للأكوا الله يخليك أهلا ويلكم حلو هاي بس عايز اصبح على المهندس خلدون صباح الفل يا باشمهندس خلدون صباح الفل باحلى الدكتور الله يخليك ازيك زي الحال الحمد لله وتعازينا على حادثه العقبة امبارح وان شاء الله يعني كويك ريكفري للناس المصرية. الحمد لله يا سيدي يعني ده احنا محسودين العالم العربي على النعم اللي احنا فيها الحمد لله بين قوسين عشان هيك بتجينا بلاوي صباح <تصفيق> الله على كل شيء شكرا شكرا دكتورنا الغالي شكرا الله يخليك يا فندم شكرا لاهل الكنانه كلهم شكرا صباح الخير سعادة السفيرة Good morning your excellency Ambassador Shahira to join us in this webinar as always the Arab Water Ministerial Council is our umbrella and supporting us you are welcome to the webinar thank you thank you very much thank you 
We are glad to be with you here. Thank you. Uh, doctor, we are still waiting for uh, Mr. Musbah Al Hilali. Maybe he'll join us within minutes. I think uh, uh, while we are waiting, His Excellency, Mr. Musbah, uh, we have to start and we'll start giving the, uh, the... First of all, I would like to welcome everybody for the people who gave us some of their time in this very important webinar. And as you know, and you received in, from our invitations that there will be more, two webinars about different topics, one on the 4th of July. It means next week. And the other, it will be after Eid al-Adha al-Mubarak. That's in 19. Hopefully that will have also more audience. <clears throat> uh, this webinar is very important, just not only to uh, stand on the status where the Arab region uh, made progress, and then uh, monitoring the SDGs, but also after that, uh, we have to sit and analyze and see the, the needs for those people and how to, we can help them in other issues. Uh, the other two webinars will be uh, helping the people in seeking fund and make fundraising. Uh, that will help them in achieve some of the projects that uh, I came out of the survey, out of the monitoring procedures. Uh, and the third about the water governance, hopefully it will be helpful. Uh, but the project, as you know, we, we, we are implementing with partnership with UN Habitat. There will be after that uh, progressing and uh, to data collection for about the status uh, where the countries has reached in uh, collecting data in the SDG regarding to the wastewater uh, treatment with the additional indicators available. So I would like to welcome to everybody, everybody and I will ask Her Excellency, uh, the Ambassador Shahira, will give us a welcome speech till Mr. Musbah is coming. Thank you. 
Your Excellency, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Khaldun. Uh, I believe you gave me the floor. Is it true? <laughs> yes, yes, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. I think this webinar is addressing the aspect of wastewater treatment, uh, namely uh, the data monitoring the technology options from communication governments which all fall with the, within the mandate of the Arab Ministerial Water Council. However, I will concentrate on one and two, which is primarily related to the League of Arab States as a regional policy organization, that's namely the issue of governance. Uh, since establishment of the Arab Ministerial Water Council, uh, it has attached great importance to the issue of water resources, of which wastewater mining is an important component, given the issue of water scarcity known to all the experts here in this uh, forum. Two important documents were adopted at the highest political level of the League of Arab States, which is the Arab Summit. These documents were the uh, water security strategy uh, and also uh, the project for the integrated management of water resources to achieve sustainable development. These two documents constitute the base for all water uh, uh, resources uh, in the region, and wastewater is an important part of it. So the required policies are in place, and the political is evident since these documents now the stage of implementation of the provision of this Arab strategy and the implementation of the project of uh, integrated management of water resources. And then like the people in this meeting are interested in the wastewater, then the focus will be on the parts of wastewater from this strategy and project. Uh, there is no doubt the need to increase agricultural production and development will affect the water resources sector by increasing the demand for the already scarce water resources. If water use continues as the current trade, the pressure on limited water resources will continue. Climate change, of course, will exacerbate the problem. Uh, so there are many steps that can be taken to limit the aggravation of the situation. Wastewater is one of the solutions in this context. So what is needed is from yeah. a governance and policy perspectives is employing data collection, evaluation, management, and monitoring techniques within an administrative framework that can be modified and developed. Enhancing cooperation between the relevant sectors and ministries and building partnership with relevant organization and developing relations with the private sector are among the basic requirements for the Arab countries to optimize the use of wastewater. Establishing an information, information system that maps the wastewater quantity and quality and treatment options with the aim of formulating a broader understanding of how to optimally include treated wastewater in the water resources accounting. Then determining the best strategies to collect more detailed data to prepare adequate charts for making decisions related to financing or building infrastructure structure, or supporting the enactment of legal framework that frameworks that address modalities of efficient and safe water treatment methods so as to ensure the safe use of wastewater. Finally, conducting scientific research and studies to fortify the science policy interface and institutionalize monitoring process. I think through these practical steps, then I think uh, uh, we, we can optimize the use of wastewater and uh, 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 we can also uh, enlarge uh, the data related to this important issue. 
I, uh, I, this is from a governance perspective. So we are waiting to see from the other perspectives of the other uh, uh, participants in this uh, meeting. Thank you very much. Your Excellency for very comprehensive, short and sweet uh, speech. Uh, and uh, always, uh, we always used to get the support from the Arab Water Ministerial Council in the Arab League. Uh, I think uh, the coming stage needs more cooperation between all the NGOs and stakeholders in water and ministries because the challenge is very high and uh, especially with the climate change in impact which is the, uh, coming very and make many fast changes. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, I would like to apologize uh, uh, for Mr. Graham, he he was supposed to be with us, but at the least, uh, and let's not. I think he's very busy somewhere. I don't know if Mr. Jose would like to speak a few words in his behalf. Um, yes, Khaldun, thank you very much. Uh, Flo my colleague Florian Tevenon will uh, will address her welcoming remarks on behalf of UN Habitat. Okay, welcome, Florian. Welcome. Yes. Thank you very much, Khaldun, and thank you, everyone, for being there. Uh, Graham is in uh, Katowice in Poland. There is a World Urban, Urban Forum, which is a very, it's maybe the biggest event for UN Habitat, so he was very busy, but uh, he will be there next week, and uh, he will make uh, a very nice and uh, inspiring talk, uh, I'm sure. So it's my pleasure to welcome also everyone to thank you all the participants, it's almost 100 people, uh, I can see it's, it's a lot. Thanks very much to my colleague from Aqua for doing all the preliminary work. <clears throat> we already heard so many uh, key words like governance, uh, integrated water resource management, climate change, uh, water quality, quantity, reuse. We see that's how it's important uh, and how wastewater should be included in water resource management and how governance and finance are important. Mm -hmm. So just a, a last word maybe about the um, 631 indicators that I will present in, in details in a few minutes, but just to remind everyone that the, uh, all UN member states have uh, adopted the 2030 agenda in 2015 and the global indicator framework in 2017. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, UN Habitat is co custodian agency for an indicator 631 on this uh, dedicate, dedicate, dedicated sorry, to wastewater. So it's the first time that wastewater is quantitatively measured in the, as a global agenda. It's very relatively new, very different, and people are always thinking about UNICEF and the uh, mm -hmm. WHO GMP work on sanitation. So we are complementary, we are working with them because WHO is also co custodian agency for our indicator, but it's very different. You will see in my presentation, we are working on, on water flow, on water volume. We are working only on, on the, the data provided by the state. So it's a, a very uh, uh, important change of paradigm that is needed, I think, uh, regarding all the challenges that we have regarding the growing water demand, growing urbanization, and of course, climate change impact. And working at the regional scale, and especially in your region, is also very important. We'll see that also having different people from NGO, but from the different ministry, from the, the regulators, the operators, and usually we also involve the national statistic offices. So I, I don't want to be too long. Just using my five minutes, I give you the floor, uh, Raldun. But thank you very much, everyone, for being there. It's a great pleasure for us, and it's so important to to see such a participation and commitment, and uh, building awareness on 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 water, wastewater, how wastewater data can be used to attract finance, to, and it's um, for policy makers, and not only from a technical perspective, but um, we can only do that all together. Thank you very much, Raldun. You are welcome. Thank you. Just uh, one remark. Uh, yes, it's more than 100, but some people in the ministries, they use one link, but there are more than 300, four, sometimes more than that. 
available. But I think the audience now, it's not less than 140. Uh, we'll give statistics after we finish, inshallah, in our report. Thank you. And uh, I don't know if uh, His Excellency, Mr. Misbah, still he did not join us. So, uh, Jose, uh, can you please uh, give you that? We can give you the floor to speak until Mr. Musbah will be joining us. Is it okay? Yes, Khaldun, thank you very much. Um, thank you um, again uh, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure to, to join this first webinar of a series of webinars uh, on wastewater treatment and monitoring that we are co-organizing, UN Habitat is co-organizing together with Aqua and under the auspices of the Arab Ministerial Water Council. Um, as my colleague um, Florian explained, this is part of a global process uh, that UN Habitat as co-custodian agency for SDG indicator 6.3.1 is carrying out to understand, to better understand what are the, the challenges and the impediments for water and wastewater utilities to um, collect wastewater data and to be able to analyze this data to inform um, national governments and national institutions to, to make the right decisions about supporting the, the wastewater sector and to attract investments. So what we are looking uh, through this global work that is being uh, implemented at regional level uh, is to set up uh, an agenda for wastewater treatment and monitoring in the context of SDGs and the Agenda 2030. So we have uh, successfully implemented series of webinars like this one uh, in Latin America, in the Caribbean and Africa. Now, as I said, we are joining forces with, with Aqua to, uh, to deepen the discussion and, the, uh, and engage with the regional actors in the Arab region. The series of webinars will, have, uh, will be three webinars see if I can. The first webinar is taking place today and the focus will be on wastewater monitoring and data management. The next webinar will be on Monday next week on the 4th of July on financing wastewater and options for investment. And the third webinar on the 19th of July will be on governance and policies for wastewater management. So let me just summarize for you, what are the main objectives of this series of webinars and what is the roadmap? So as you can see, the way the programs of these webinars have been framed it, is that we want this to be a platform to share experiences on wastewater treatment and management from different utilities and, and ministries and governments in the countries of the region to demonstrate good practices of wastewater data management and monitoring, but also on financing mechanisms and new opportunities to access these fundings and to improve and strengthen governance and policy frameworks that can support wastewater management in the region. But we also want to identify through this um, exchange of experiences and the discussion with, with all actors involved, we want to uh, understand what are the technical challenges and the major drawbacks at utility level in complying with wastewater monitoring requirements. That includes, of course, issues of operation and maintenance uh, and security, planning and um, and most importantly, the, uh, the necessary funding to support these, uh, these activities at utility level. As it was said before, um, one of the main results that we want to achieve through these webinars is to build evidence on the importance of utility level, utility wastewater data to inform decision-making 
at local level, but also at national level to orient investments that can support the, the sector, both at the local level, but also at the national and regional level. But we cannot have this discussion alone at local level with municipal or utility level. We would like to engage also national authorities and governmental officials. That's why the, the presence and the participation of the Arab Ministerial Water Council is key to inform these discussions. We also are engaging financiers. The Islamic uh, Development Bank will be part of this, uh, of this process and also to invite to involve the private sector and business representatives, all these regional actors to be part of a broader conversation around wastewater development in the region. We are expecting that through these three webinars, we will be able to identify opportunities, first of all, to identify the needs and the gaps at utility level, to identify new programs for training and capacity development and capacity building in the region, to enhance wastewater management and monitoring, and to strengthen the capacities at utility level to do this work. And this is why the role of Aqua is extremely important in this, in this process, um, because we see Aqua as the main actor and partner in the region to build the capacity of utilities to, to, to meet, to deal with this challenge related to wastewater and, and wastewater data. So with that, um, Khaldun, I give you back the floor. And we really, I really wish that these discussions today and through the next two webinars will be successful and will help you in Habitat inform the roadmap for the future. Thank you so much. Thank you for keeping the good timing. I was just want to tell you that almost you finished, but you were faster than me. Thank you. Uh, yes, I would, uh, would like to emphasize and about the uh, cooperation between you and Habitat and Aqua. Uh, Aqua, as you know, uh, it covers most of the Arab country. It's owned by the Arab utilities and governmental entities and a big number of expertise and NGOs and international organizations. This will help uh, Aqua in being a reliable partner in achieving the goals of the water scarcity everywhere in the region and in the world. Uh, for by seeing that, I would like again to welcome His Excellency Mr. Musbah Al Hilali, the CEO of the National uh, uh, Water Distribution in Tunisia, that's SONAD, and he's uh, also the chairman of the board of Aqua for this session. Dr. Uh, Mr. Musbah, you are welcome, and please, uh, we would like to hear from you. Hello? Hello? Beautiful. Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, ahlin. Ahlan. Asfi ala ta'akhir fil wuluj lal nadwa. O tahiyyati lal huzur al kullu, tahiyyati lik akh khaldun. تفضل أخ خلدون ما كنتش نسمع فيك لأنه كان ثم انقطاع في في الصوت. يا سيدي أهلا وسهلا كنا we were presenting your excellency you are the chairman of the board of director and you are the CEO of the national water company distribution company in Tunis your experience on the local level and international level through so not international is well known. Uh, we need to hear from you a few words about our program, about your thoughts. Thank you, Your Excellency. Shukran jazeelan, Akh Khaldun. I'm going to talk about Arabic or French, if you allow me, maybe in Arabic. In Arabic. In Arabic. As you know, the Aqua, which is the Arabic community of the Arab community, كنا ما للأسف معناها خذينا رئاسة مجلس الإدارة تقريب قبل جائحة كورونا وكانوا سنتين الحق ما 
ما كانتش الـ 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 الامور معناها في صالحنا لانه سنوات 20 و21 جائحه كورونا اثرت على النشاط نتاعنا وكنا نامل انه يكون النشاط مكثف اكثر لكن هذه فرصه باش انطلقت الجمعيه في هالنشاط هذا واليوم احنا معناها بكل صدق احنا معناها ما نجمو كان ندعمه التمشي هذا وخاصه في مجال مجال استعمال المياه المستعملة إعادة معالجتها واستعمالها في عديد الاستعمالات الفلاحية وغيرها لأنه اليوم مع معناها ندرة المياه ومع الإشكالات والضغوطات الكبيرة على مصادر المياه في البلدان العربية وفي الوطن العربي يعني لا بد أن تكون معنا وقفة وقفة شاملة للنظر في كيفية استعمال الموارد المائية يعني الغير تقليدي وهذا ربما المجهود لابد أنه الجمعية أقوى تكون من أول معناها المنظمات ولا للدعوة ولتسهيل استعمال وتسهيل يعني الولوج لهالموارد المائية الغير تقليدية هذه ولابد أنه كامل البلدان العربية تعطي أكثر أكثر أهمية وأكثر ما يعني انتباه إلى استعمال هالموارد هذه اللي في أغلب الأحيان هي موارد مهدورة موارد مهدورة ولا بد من تكثيف استعمالها ولا بد من تبادل الخبرات تبادل الخبرات بين البلدان العربية اللي معناها استعمال هالموارد هذه لأنه الضغط كبير في المستقبل على الموارد وأنتم تعرفوا في المناطق الكل وخاصة أنا دائما نذكر معناها مناطق شمال أفريقيا والشرق الأوسط ونذكر الأردن وتونس اللي هما كما تعرفوا حصة الفرد من الموارد المائية التقليدية المتاحة هي ضعيفة جدا ولا بد من العمل على نشر هالثقافة هذه متاع إعادة استعمال المياه المعالجة مياه الصرف الصحي المعالجة ولا بد من المرور إلى المعالجة الثلاثية ولا بد من يعني نشر التكنولوجيات الحديثه والاعتماد على تبادل هالتكنولوجيات مع بلدان اخرى اللي ربما كان عندها تقدم في المجال هذا والتكنولوجيات معناها موجوده اليوم التكنولوجيات موجوده لابد من العمل مع المنظمات الدوليه ومع المنظمات كما اكوا باش نطوروا الولوج للتكنولوجيات هذه انا نذكر على سبيل المثال في تونس يعني ثم امكانيات كبيره فيما يخص معناها المياه المستعمله اللي اليوم ربما من من عالجوا منها تقريبا كان 5% كان 5% هي كميه المياه المعالجه المستعمله المعالجه واللي يعود استعمالها في الاغراض الفلاحيه لسقي معناها الاشجار خاصه الغراسات الاشجار وغيرها لكن لا بد من مجهود اضافي من كافه البلدان العربيه ولا بد وربما اقوى عندها دور كبير ل يعني دفع التقنيات هذه واللي يعني تعميم التقنيات في كامل البلدان العربيه وخاصه البلدان اللي تعاني في شح كبير في الموارد المائيه. مره اخرى اخ خلدون شكري الكبير للجمعيه على تنظيم هالملتقى هذايا وهالويبينار هذايا اللي الحقيقه ان شاء الله يكون مجال لتبادل الخبرات بين عديد الخبراء اللي هما ما في الحقيقه موجودين في كامل البلدان الاقطار العربيه وان شاء الله يعني نتبادل ونتشارك معناها تشير معناها هالتجربه نتاع كل بلاد وربما نخرج ببعض التوصيات اللي تساعدنا في المستقبل لوضع ربما بعض البرامج في بعض البلدان اللي ربما الدعم المالي يكون موجود من بعض المنظمات وبعض الشركات الكبرى في مجال معالجه المياه المستعمله. وشكرا لأخ خلدون شكرا سعد رئيس مجلس إدارة الجمعية I would like to thank your, your, your excellency for this very comprehensive uh, thoughts and uh, allow me to give brief in English uh, for other audience speaking uh, non-Arabic language uh, His excellency started of talking about the importance of the cooperation between the Arab countries and AQUA and the international organizations such as UN Habitat now and also emphasizing of the necessity of using the 
reclaimed water and treated with water for uh, agriculture and other uses. Uh, and uh, taking into consideration that most of the Arab countries, and he gave example, Tunisia and uh, Jordan are facing very severe scarcity in the freshwater resources. Therefore, there is no way of ignoring the treated with water and the unconventional uh, water resources to be used and save of some of the uh, water resources for other uses. Uh, also, His Excellency emphasized about going for the tertiary treatment at Tanqith to go for unrestricted uh, irrigation. And again, there are some very good examples and knowledge between the Arab countries that it has to be transferred and it has to be uh, exchanged the knowledge and technologies. And at the same time, he also uh, said the importance of uh, importing the international technologies through the, the international organizations and stand where the needs of the Arab countries, uh, either technology or small projects and building capacity, and looking for also some funding uh, and uh, the cooperation between ACWA as a representative of the Arab uh, utilities countries and international agencies and international funding agencies. Uh, His Excellency, uh, thank you everybody as a chairman of ACWA and his wishes the best wishes for our webinars and the coming webinars. Thank you, shukran your Excellency and uh, I hope that I translated uh, uh, the real message uh, from your thoughts. Thank you. Yes, you are right. Thank you. Shukran jazeera. Uh, الآن يعني هذه كانت this is the was the welcoming speech from the organizers and also the Arab League and our chairman. Now we are going to talk and give the floor to for our two main experts who will be giving. some two presentations about our webinar and uh, Dr. Ali Karnib is uh, experts working always with Aqua. He was with us within we, when we did the uh, MDG plus project in, uh, for the Arab Water Ministerial Council and Mr. Florent is also from uh, UN Habitat. Uh, those, two, those two gentlemen will be also after the webinars with us while gathering the data and the treating the data. That's the next step of the project and the next, next uh, part of our project. So I give the floor to, I don't know, Florian, I think, yeah. to start his presentation. Then we'll go to Dr. Ali, please. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? It's each. It's 15 minutes each. Yes. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me and see my screen? Yes, okay, thank you very much. And thank you very much for your recapitulation and translation. And it was very interesting to hear about uh, tertiary treatment, reuse, technology transfer. I mean, the need, so it's really also what we want to, to know. So I will uh, introduce and explain you the 631 methodology and all the figure come from this report that was published uh, uh, last year. So here is a, the SDG 6 target on the right and the definition of target 63 on the left by 2030, improve water quality by reducing pollution, eliminating dumping and minimizing the release of hazardous chemicals and materials, having the proportion of untreated wastewater and substantially increasing recycling and safe reuse globally. There are two indicators on this target, uh, 631 on the proportion of wastewater safely treated and 632 on the proportion of bodies of waters uh, with good ambient water quality. 
Mr. Florent, can you raise your voice a little bit? Yes, I can try, yes. yes. Thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, so here is a representation of the methodology used to monitor indicator 631, focusing on wastewater generated by point sources only on the left. The flow, um, it's also including the wastewater flow from independent collecting systems, such as septic tank here, and uh, that can be also transported to a treatment plant for safe treatment as illustrated by uh, the truck here. Some of the wastewater is also, of course, also discharged to the environment without treatment, and sewer uh, also generally collects some runoff water. So UN Habitat is focusing on the total and industrial wastewater statistics using the methodology developed by the United Nations Statistics Division, UNEP, and uh, Eurostat and OECD for the European and OECD members. This official statistics are supplied by national statistic offices and or ministries of environment or equivalent institution, but usually by uh, NSO. And in parallel, in the same indicator, WHO is building estimate on the domestic fraction, but it's very different from our, our approach and, and numbers. So um, here are the variable used for the generation of wastewater on the left. The industrial fraction is disaggregated by economic activities using the international standard industrial classification of all economic activity, the ISIC codes for mining and quarrying, manufacturing, electricity, but excluding the cooling water and construction. And the domestic fraction is disaggregated by household and services. And agriculture exclude non-point sources such as runoff and irrigation. On the right are reported the variable for the treatment of wastewater. The other treatment plant include the treatment of wastewater in any non-public treatment plant, for instance, industry, which have their own uh, treatment facilities. And the independent treatment facilities are are not connected to a wastewater collection system uh, such as septic tank. You can see on the right the breakdown for the two um, by the three level of treatment: primary, secondary, and, and tertiary. So that's the variables that are on the UNSD questionnaires that I will show afterward. The results now. Uh, this figure represents the volume of wastewater generated from the 56 country who reported in 2015 using a logarithmic scale. Um, we used 2015 because that was the first report, so as a baseline, but also because that was a highly po populated year, because UNSD is reporting, is sending its questionnaire every two years, and that was the most uh, populated year. So we, we chose um, 2015, and you see 56 country reporting on, on the flow of wastewater generated. Here is the disaggregation of the country reporting to UNSC on the wastewater treatment, uh, showing a high heterogeneity in the variables that I presented before. And what you can see is that uh, more blue, which correspond to the utility data. Um, so it's also to, to, to point out and to insist on the important role of uh, water utility for uh, wastewater data monitoring and reporting. And what we show, what we see here is also uh, only a uh, few uh, country reporting on uh, red, which is the water generated by industries. The wastewater flow uh, treated now. Um, on the treatment, yes. This is a proportion. There is less countries that on the previous slide. And uh, this is, I was just looking for the number of countries, but it's not important, uh, 57 countries. So now the same number of countries and the, the volume 42 billion, which is in fact very low because the, the reporting is, is relatively scarce yet. So uh, another example of disaggregation for the wastewater treatment this time. And again, a lot of blue because most of the data come from utility 
uh, reporting on the volume of wastewater treated by uh, in, in a urban or municipal uh, wastewater treatment plant. But you can see again uh, some heterogeneity and very low um, brown color, which is corresponding to industrial wastewater treatment. So now the what is needed for the indicator is a proportion. And here there are a few uh, less country because you need uh, um, the two numbers, the uh, nominator and denominator, the, the volume gener treated and, and generated to calculate the ratio. So you can see also on the left that some, some ratio are a super equivalent or superior than 100%, um, most likely because of an improved monitoring of the wastewater flow treated, especially in municipal wastewater treatment plant, which can treat an important proportion of runoff water, especially in Europe or, or, or Northern country. So uh, there are 42 country uh, reporting on both generation and treatment, and 32% uh, of uh, total wastewater treated, which means that it receives at least some treatment. And um, in blue, it's a percentage of safely treated, which corresponds to the definition of the indicator, with, but which did not exist before we start our collaboration with uh, Eurostat and OECD. So it's just, it was just available for a few uh, UNSD country, and it corresponds to at least secondary treatment. For the 14 only country who reported on industrial wastewater generation and treatment, a third of the flow received uh, some treatment, and uh, only a few country recording uh, on uh, at least secondary treatment for UNSD. So a major finding is that uh, the low data coverage now, which does not allow us to provide regional and global estimate. This diagram is comparing the volume of wastewater reported in blue on the left, with the proportion of the world population covered by this data on, in gray on the right. And the 56 and 57 country reporting on total wastewater generation and treatment correspond to 20% of the population. And the 32 and 15 country reporting on industrial wastewater uh, generation treatment correspond to only 12 and 3% of the world population. So in addition to the low number of reporting countries, this uh, figure representing the water consumption in Switzerland point out the absence of reporting of self-supply water resources in national statistics usually, which is another challenge. Um, because usually water consumption by economic activities such as trade, industry, and agriculture uh, do not use uh, public water supply, but their own water supply, such as groundwater, river, lakes, etc. So they generally, these statistics are, are, are not included in the national statistic. And this is a, a, another issue, especially for industrial water supply. So uh, this figure from Mexico is showing the importance of non-municipal discharge and, and water quality, as it was uh, raised before. And um, on the left, you have uh, the volume uh, of wastewater generated and treated by municipal and non-municipal in dark and light blue, which are almost equivalent in terms of um, volume on the left. But you can see on the right that much more biochemical oxygen demand, which is uh, an indicator of water quality, is generated and discharged sorry, by non-municipal sources, the light blue, than by uh, municipal sources. So again, it's to stress the importance to also focus on non-municipal sources, even if the data are, are, are more uh, accessible. This figure represents the relative loads of BOD in Costa Rica by economic activity as a percentage of the total uh, BOD related to wastewater discharge. You can see that agriculture and livestock represent 41%, food production 25%, and surprisingly, discharge of wastewater and sludge only 12%, retail trade 6%, and other economic activity 17%. So these data therefore again also demonstrate the importance of filling the existing gaps on commercial and industrial wastewater discharge to the environment because of the high proportion of uh, in terms of uh, volume of flow, but also in terms of impact on, on the environment because of the, the, the pollutant. So to conclude, 
on the total in industrial statistics that were reported to this international database in 2015, only 40 to 42.3, covering uh, almost 20% of the world population, reported some statistics on wastewater generation and treatment. This data suggests that about a third of the total industrial wastewater received some treatment before discharge. Uh, just to, to show uh, uh, all the data can uh, be uh, downloaded on uh, the SDG 6 data uh, portal where you can also uh, build some map and compare with all the other SDG 6 indicator. This is showing the, the country who reported some data in 2015, and especially in uh, your region. You can see who, which country are reported or not reporting. And you can see that for industries, there is almost uh, no reporting. So I don't know my my I, my, my my presentation is finished. I, I just have download because uh, the, the also to show you the questionnaire for Jordan and for Tunisia because I I saw that they, they are going to present, which is really great. And just to show you that uh, we need to update because I had the chance to report in 2015. But if this country are not reporting for the next uh, uh, data round collection, which will be done in uh, September then I, I, I won't be able to report. And also, I know that sometimes countries have, have much more detailed data, especially Jordan, than the ones that are reported. So also to encourage everyone to, to report uh, um, wastewater data uh, to, to UNSC and to link with us. If you have any question regarding this questionnaire, which are relatively easy to understand, you have also uh, all the definitions that are summarized. And you can find all the link uh, to the methodology, to UN Water, UNSD, and to the at the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Raldun. The floor is yours. Yeah. The... Thank you. Thank you for very good, detailed uh, discussion and uh, presentation, but within the time. Thank you. Great. That was my I think. Uh, it's it's obvious that uh, there is a lot of things to do and there are a lot of efforts that we in UN Habitat and Aqua will be with the uh, countries to help them in achieving the reports and uh, at the end also analyze it. Uh, when we talk about analysis, then it comes to our second speaker, our colleague, Dr. Ali Karnib. He's a freelancer and he's uh, a partner of Aqua in, in, in the MDG Plus, where he used to make the analysis. Uh, the floor is yours, uh, Dr. Ali, with 15 minutes. Hopefully that you can use it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Excellency. And uh, I hope uh, I will share my screen now. Uh, I hope to, to cope with my 15 minutes. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, uh, very good. So actually, uh, I would like to thank uh, the speakers uh, before uh, my presentation that uh, really give uh, insights about the wastewater uh, monitoring and reporting, and particularly on SDG 6 and Decatur 6.3.1. I will emphasize on that and try to back to the Arab region to see, to see what, what we can do, what we already done, and in here I have my outline. Uh, I will talk a little bit about what already done in the Arab region <clears throat> for monitoring wastewater flow. And secondly, I will I will uh, just give insights what still needs to be done in the context of SDG 6.3.1. And finally, I would suggest uh, a way forward actually to to uh, comply or to achieve that. Um, let me start firstly about what already done in the Arab region. Uh, everybody <clears throat> from the Arab utilities used to work with, with us um, in the MDG Plus initiative project. It was really very interesting initiative and project that, uh, let's go to the basis of that. This was a regional initiative launched by the Arab Ministerial Water Council to establish a regional mechanism for monitoring and reporting on access to water supply and sanitation services in the Arab countries. So it includes also the water supply. <clears throat> this initiative 
actually was implemented on, on behalf of the Arab Ministerial Water Council and implemented by ESQA in partnership with Aqua and GLASS. <clears throat> Now, um, the institutional uh, structure of this initiative, uh, and it's very important to, to actually to present that because collecting data from utilities and <clears throat> from public institution in the Arab region, it's not straightforward. And we, we, we have to actually to make this, um, let's say structure to actually to succeed and, and get the data and analyze the data and I will tell you that sometimes we get data to measure indicators because we have the, the raw data and we have to uh, work with this raw data to, uh, uh, to, to actually to measure the indicators. And here we have to make analysis. We have to correct some data. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes there's a difference in units and so on. So the structure, we have the regional level uh, advisory board and we have the MDG plus unit at Aqua. And from the NDG plus unit, we have a national, at the national level, we have a, a national monitoring team leaded by a, uh, uh, sorry, the, the national monitoring team leader uh, uh, that leads a national focal points. And also we have, we, we make some uh, level uh, field surveys in, in some uh, rural areas. So actually this is the structure and then let me tell you that about the indicators, because this is important. We are talking about monitoring, so we have to uh, show and present the indicators. As you can see in this figure, we have a lot of uh, a range of indicators, starting from water, uh, wastewater uh, collected, uh, treated for different types of treatment, and also the untreated, and the reuse which is uh, which is was actually the first initiative uh, regionally and maybe globally that take all these parameters and and uh, data and uh, computing indicators related to this type of information in addition to that we have also the tariff structure and the affordability related to the cost of treatment which is important to our region so um also, we, we, did, we did reports. We have two reports from 2015 and 2016. The data of these reports are stopped in 2013. So the reports are reporting data from 2013. So it's, uh, Yanni, I can say that uh, it's, a, it's a bad to, to our region to stop uh, collecting these data uh, on 2013. Um, during this initiative, we, we uh, prepared technical guides for, for how to cal calculate the indicators. We, we developed a software to uh, actually to help uh, the utilities to collect the indicators, uh, to collect the data and calculate the indicators directly using the software. And also we provided a guide, uh, a guiding, to, uh, guiding uh, documents to how to use these indicators and so forth. Now, uh, based on, the, on, the, on that, and this would, would help us to go forward uh, towards the SDG 6.3.1. And uh, what, I, what I'm presenting for you is, is to, to know that what we already done in, in the region and what we, what we have to uh, actually build on this and go to the SDG 6.3.1. Uh, we collected around uh, a huge number of data records, and we, we computed indicators from these data records, mainly our collection from the water utilities. And uh, in terms of numbers, we, we had uh, uh, worked with 189 water and sanitation utilities, okay, we, we, of course, with, with in, in, uh, under the aqua uh, um, umbrella. And then we collected out around 7,000 data records for urban and rural areas, and we computed the MDG plus indicators. Uh, and here you can see the, the water utilities from different uh, countries. Um, the number of water utilities, so for example, in Palestine, we had uh, to cope with 81 uh, water utility uh, or water authority. Uh, now, as a result, when we present our reports, uh, I, will, I will give you some insights from, from what, what are the, the indicators that we, we computed in this uh, initiative. We, we had compute the proportion of population using sanitation systems in percentage. 
as a number of population and percentage. Uh, this data comes from utilities. Uh, you have to, you have to, uh, this is very important because you, you can find lots of data that uh, come from surveys or whatever, but here these are authentic data that comes directly from source. So uh, also we can, we, we had, for example, the annual volume collected uh, of wastewater by private sewer networks uh, for the Arab region, for the Arab countries, as you can see, uh, we also computed uh, the annual treated wastewater volume versus that is being used. So we can, you can see the results here. Um, we computed also the proportion of the annual collected wastewater volume that are, that are receiving primary, secondary, and tertiary treatment as a percentage. So here are the results for the Arab region. Um, in addition to that, we, we computed the proportion of the annually treated wastewater volume that are being used in irrigation or groundwater research, uh, research reuse. This is the results uh, in front of you for the Arab region. Um, I would say that, um, for example, here I, I, ca I can give you an example from Egypt, the, how, how we can actually map the road, uh, map the, the, the flows of the wastewater based on the MDG plus indicators. So you can see that the, the, the collected wastewater versus that are not collected and what are the collected that are receiving, um, receiving here, for example, treatment uh, as a primary, secondary, secondary and tertiary. Okay, so you can, we can also also map uh, give uh, give uh, figures like that or or maps uh, such as these maps. So uh, uh, this is uh, this is uh, just uh, an overview figure that comes also from from results of the indicators of MDG plus uh, how much we have uh, treated uh, how much we have collected and what are the percentage of treated uh, wastewater from the collected and you can see we have. We have a certain amount that are unused, and this is not good for for governance, as uh, Excellency um, uh, mentioned, uh, Ms. Shahira Wahbi, that we need also to to use this information in governance. It's not only that we want to map the information or to collect the information. We need this information to be built uh, in 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 decision making system and policy systems. Uh, to use it in, in policy settings. Um, and also, let's say that GMP now, uh, in, the, in the documents uh, generated from GMP to the, to the Arab region and also to, um, to the Arab countries, you can see that MTG Plus is mentioned here in their reports, in their, in their country reports, and they put the results from MDG Plus initiative uh, as a one of the sources uh, of their uh, data uh, collecting system. So this is, uh, this is actually um, uh, good for NDG Plus initiative that was recognized as um, authentical source of information or, or of data. Uh, and I, I want to mention, uh, to, to remind you that this was stopped, the NDG Plus initiative, the data collection at, in 2013. Now, uh, back to what still needs to be done to cope with SDG 6.3.1. As my colleague uh, Florian uh, mentioned, that there is a methodology, there's a certain uh, indicators and uh, data needed uh, to cope or, or to measure these indicators. Uh, and here I, I present the, uh, the, let's say the, the data needed to collect and to be collected. Uh, and I put MDG plus variables just to show if we are collecting this information or not previously and you can see that we have some some information collected already based on the sdg 6.3.1 uh, but there's others are not collected now uh, i present this actually this um, data or uh, needed to to be collected for you and to be discussed with you uh, as also rep a utility representative or also a professional working in the wastewater uh, system in your in your countries we need your opinion. Uh, can we actually go to these indicators uh, and, and data uh, to build another initiative to collect these data and to present it as data needed for SDG 6.3.1, 6.3.2, 6.3.3, 6.3.4, 6.3.5, 6.3.6, 6.3.7, 6.3.8, 6.3.9, 6.3.10, 6.3.11, 6.3.12, 6.3
similar to what we did we did in the MDG Plus initiative, and uh, and now we can we can be as a region we are um, uh, as Arab countries also that we are really we have authentic data uh, and we cope with all the necessary data needed uh, for the SDG 6.3.1, and we can see our progress. Uh, our country's pro progress to achieve uh, these uh, the water the water uh, goal. Uh, I, I will just go directly. So uh, my colleague Florian present the indicators a little bit, but I just here I want to give you that from these indicators we already did some some uh, collection from the NDG plus initiative i have also to mention to add and this was agreed with florian in in, in a previous meeting to add uh, to this um, let's say questionnaire or data collection sheet to add the affordability which means we we want to know how much we are paying for for wastewater treatment and uh, and also the tariffs uh, this is important also for us um, and the, and also we can we can calculate this in, in percentage of population, uh, not only in a volume uh, unit. We can translate it in, in percentage of population, and we need it for uh, for the SDG six point three point one, uh, as per the methodology used by UN Habitat. Uh, an optional an optional uh, data could be collected. It's not it's not uh, something due, but it's. Uh, Optional. If the utilities have this information, we can use it. We can collect it. Uh, it's about how much BOD inflows are are entering in the wastewater treatment plants. How much the efficiency of the treatment is done. In, in how much the how much the treatment actually uh, uh, the, the outflow is receiving and and so on. All these all these technical parameters uh, could be could be collected uh, if it's available. And I think for, for you now to give your opinion, uh, as, as, uh, as I said, as professional and working in utilities, is it possible? Uh, is it, do you have this information in your utilities or not? Uh, please give us feedback. Um, and also, um, I have to mention that um, uh, from, uh, from my colleague, uh, His Excellency, um, Mr. Musbah Hilali mentioned about, about the technologies and the new technologies. And I want to say that now we are talk, thinking about smart uh, and uh, smart sensors that can that can measure these, these uh, parameters and give insights to, to the operator how much uh, his operation, his, uh, his treatment system is working effectively. So in the future, we need this information. So please think about it now and tell us if it's possible. Now, uh, finally, this is my final slide, uh, to suggest the way forward. I think to, to be effective and to give a data that are uh, firstly um, accurate and comes from the origin of the data, the utilities, the wastewater utilities, we need to build a mechanism uh, of collection. Uh, and my suggestion to this mechanism to be to be uh, actually um, uh, implemented in Aqua uh, as a data collection unit, and then uh, we we can cooperate with utilities in the Arab countries based on national monitoring monitoring team and national focal points, and also we can take the national statistical bureaus uh, into account and and co and uh, coordinate with them about the data and maybe sh and also share with them the results of this data. And uh, all these collection system should be feed into water governance. Uh, and here we can, we can think about um, uh, later on how to introduce the connection between uh, the data and the water governance, how to, how to help decision makers, uh, how to help the water governors uh, to use this, uh, this data effectively and also to, to produce a very effective policy setting. Uh, that's it. I hope that uh, I didn't pass my time. Thank you for, for, for listening. Thank you, Dr. Ali. And you consume little more time, but we left you speaking because the last uh, uh, 
slide was very important and it was the message after your very comprehensive uh, presentation. And now I would like to address all the audience to take the opportunity for uh, definite questions and answers and get the time, good time from those two gentlemen and two very high level experts of having any questions. And please, I would like to request them again to send any questions for us, who, for those people who could not get the time to be to, to ask, because, you know, we have only 10 minutes for a question and answers. And I know there are a lot of questions in your minds. This can be sent us directly and we can answer it to everybody later. Now I will give the floor to my colleague Mahdi uh, because today I, I uh, sorry, today I left my glasses at home. So he will give uh, the floor to the audience, but I can see uh, our uh, Ahmed Ali. Ali. Mr. 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 Mahdi will please take the floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you uh, for this uh, great webinar. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Ali, do you have any question? You raise your hand. You can speak in Arabic or English. It's up to you. Mr. Mohammed Ali, uh, anybody, anyone who, who has a question, please just raise your hand. So I'll unmute you here from uh, my seat. Okay, Mr. Ramiz, please. Mr. Ramos. Yes, good morning, um, good afternoon, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Ramos Madhun from Palestine Gas Strip WSRC. Actually, I, I have a, um, a comment. The, the general assumption of, of all this webinar that uh, they are assuming that the wastewater uh, is uh, adequate for uh, treatment and reuse, which is not the case, uh, for, for example, uh, for Gaza Strip. We have a, a very high TDS. Uh, for for the generated wastewater, which makes it very difficult to be uh, to be reused. Uh, this is this is um, uh, one essential thing. So the assumption of collecting the data for the wastewater, uh, and this is my question: Does it uh, is it uh, uh, independent from the quality of the wastewater um, uh, uh, collected, uh, if it can be reused or not? Because from what I see, the wastewater generated in Gaza Strip mostly is. Um, useless and, uh, and and has nothing to, to do the second the second point is that uh, uh the uh, to to for mr uh, uh, ali Garnib, the, the 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 categorization the lack of categorization actually we have only one collection uh, uh, network in, in in palestine and i think most uh, most uh, uh, the arab countries when i say uh, uh, that's that's the wastewater uh, collection. Uh, we don't have a separate uh, a network for industrial or agriculture or something like that, and uh, that makes it difficult to to to, to separate. You to unless you, unless we do it at, at the source. Uh, Mr. Ramis, can you summarize your question and give yes, it? That's 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 it. My question was, and the rest was a comment. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, any of two the two ex gentlemen experts can would like to react on that? Uh, yeah, yes, me, let, let me just uh, react on, 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 the, on the issue of industrial wastewater, which is very important, actually, a comment. Thank you, uh, Ramis, for, for raising that. And I think it's not only in, in, in Palestine and Gaza, this issue is present in the Arab region. Uh, sometimes we don't have a, a separate uh, network for industrial. Industries are uh, actually the... the um, the wastewater are, are treated inside in, in sites in the industries itself. This is what is happening in Lebanon, uh, and we we can we can actually here we have to think how to get these data. And I, I now I give the floor to my colleague Florian to explain to us uh, how actually to to overcome this obstacle in in, in our region. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for the, the question. And thanks again, Ali, for the, the presentation. It was very clear. And, uh, and yes, for reuse, in fact, uh, reuse is in the target, but it's not monitored yet through this indicator. So that's something that we will uh, update, I think, in the next uh, year and the next data collection, which may be uh, and publication of the progress report, which may be in two years. OK, so I think we need to agree there is a raw uh, wastewater reuse, 
and the safe wastewater reuse. So the objective of the target is to promote safe water reuse, but of course it's totally different depending on the uh, what uh, wastewater characteristic and the reuse. If it's for crops, it is for uh, you know. Uh, uh, Yes, for, for the different use. So there is no real uh, definition yet, except of course the FAO guidelines, but it, it's not fixed yet. The problem is that I'm working with, we are working with two different uh, um, framework, one with uh, it's, uh, UNSD and one it's uh, Eurostat OEC, and uh, they are different, I think, from, from that side. So there is no agreement yet, but of course we will promote a safe reuse and we need to determine, and maybe having the two, uh, disaggregation, one on the total and one on the safe uh, we use safe. Over, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, may I add, if you allow me, uh, in, in Jordan, uh, we did an exercise for uh, mapping all the industrial wastewater that's connected to the sewer system. And uh, within that, we de defined the quantity, the quality, what are the all the hazard metals over there, the COD, everything. And we put it within GIS map. And within that, we develop a monitoring program uh, and a training program for that. Now, I think in Saudi Arabia also, there are some one entity that takes care of all the industrial uh, wastewater. Uh, I think uh, this is very important especially if we don't uh, monitor what is going out of these uh, industries, it may affect all the process within the conventional treatment plant. At the end, we'll have a heavy hazard and very uh, critical health system. So Aqua is there and we have a very good and certified the training program and monitoring procedures. And within that program also we develop the bylaw that will be uh, uh, endorsed by the government to show the responsibilities, everything uh, to control and monitor that. Thank you. Now, I think Mahdi. Yeah, uh, thank you. Dr. Raji, would you please uh, join us with your question? Do, uh, Mr. Rams, is it okay from your side? Is it, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Dr. Rai. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mari. Thank you, Engineer Khaldun. I would like to thank the, both uh, Dr. Thibonan and uh, Dr. Karnib for their uh, really excellent presentations. I have two concerns. I know that uh, I don't want to take too much time. So the first one, I think we are overlooking one of very important issues in the collection, which is data discrepancies from the same source yet each one come up with a different data this is something coming two international organizations will be working in one site and each one will come with two different set of data dr darwish can you increase the volume of your voice please louder louder this is good yeah, it's good. This is good like this? Okay. Okay. Uh, my you. first concern that uh, both speakers kindly talk about data accuracy and reliability. But I think we overlook data discrepancies. Sometimes two agencies would come to the same site and each one will provide a set of different figures. So which one? Do we have a mechanism to verify? This is one thing I think it's big concern in data collection thing. Uh, the second thing is that we are taking what we are having as a given, i.e., uh, when we come to talk about second and third level of treatment, why in heaven I should go to third treatment and like Mr. Foriel said, which we will use it in crops. So actually, we are cleaning the second treated water to the third treatment, taking away fertilizers and then coming back and give it as a fresh and having fertilizer. I'm an economist, so I'm sorry I'm coming from this background. Why in heaven you go to the third level when you can have a second treatment level? We have to have a mechanism for that. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Anyone of them? Uh, yes. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Raji. Uh, Florian, you would like to answer? L let me just, before you, uh, just give uh, one, one insight related to the data collection. And thank you, Dr. Raji, for what you, what you mentioned about accuracy and disparency when, when different agencies working on the same, um, on the same uh, issue, let's say the wastewater, they, they might give data that is not, um, when you when you define to them some indicators, maybe they, they give they, they understand what you what you give them uh, in different ways. So we solved this issue by uh, by actually um, giving a like a manual document to explain exactly what we mean what we mean by each data, uh, and to actually to to let them understand because we, we did also a capacity building for these people before starting collecting data. And based on the capacity building that we did and the training and, and, the, and the manuals uh, that we provide, uh, we are certainly uh, that the data will come to us uniformly, uniformly. Uh, and beside that, we have also another control on the data received which is an expert, he, he will he will actually, uh, it was me actually, I, I, I took this collection of data and I make another, uh, let's say, um, uh, to, to make sure that there's no, there is no um, misunderstanding or something like that to, to, to find the, the errors if, if there's any error or, or any discrepancy between the, between the uh, data collected. Uh, go ahead, Florian, the floor is yours. Okay, yeah, thank you. And thank you for the question. That's really important. And uh, so, as I said, we are using this uh, uh, framework, this methodology that were existing through uh, the United Nations Statistics Division and UNEP questionnaire. And uh, even if they are not totally aligned with uh, Eurostat and OECD questionnaire, we are really trying to, to, we are meeting every month or every three months discussing this, uh, the small discrepancy and for us, it's really important. And what we are doing with UN Habitat is that we are only reporting the official data. So as Ali also explained before, it's only the data from the government and we don't want to develop a new database. Uh, there are already database existing. We want to reinforce the capacity to, to, to build some awareness and to encourage country to report, but they have to do their own reporting, okay? We did not change the data. We did not interpolate the data. We don't do any modification. And the data come from the Ministry of Water, of Environment, and the National Statistic Offices. But this is really different from the WHO estimate, which are estimates that are not provided by the government. And I understand that there are some issue and some surprise. And because it's different, it's an estimate that is built for the entire country, built on the water consumption. I think it's complementary regarding the, the data scarcity, but it's really uh, difficult for us to, to explain this difference. WHO is providing estimates uh, based on, on uh, a number of different sources, which are not necessarily official, but we are not providing estimates. We are just reporting the official data from the government. And I think what you also say on, on, on reuse is really important. And as it's made the cost, the, the implementing the water polluter pay principle and not doing a, as an economist, it's also really important and uh, to, 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 to have this consideration of, of the cost and uh, the, the aligning the, 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 the treatment depending on the, the water characteristic and, and, and the reuse. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Florian. Thank you, uh, Ali. Uh, Dr. Abdel Qawi, uh, please, Your Excellency, can you ask your question, please? Salam alaikum. Alaikum. So, I would like to thank uh, APWA for uh, Engineer Khaldun for providing uh, the UN Habitat and the speakers for uh, providing this uh, workshop. It's really it's, uh, very important in my capacity. The Minister of Water and Water, water Utilities in Egypt. The only problem I can see in the water water sector now in most of the Arab countries is the sanitation. Sanitation is a source of pollution, and uh, we have to uh, treat 
the water either from sanitation or from uh, any other uh, source, uh, agriculture also, uh, uh, agriculture drainage is a big source for us in Egypt. Uh, we should reuse the, this water again. And the most important also, which I have to mention, nobody talk about it, is the sludge. We should also treat the sludge. And uh, nowadays, many countries they start using the sludge to produce energy. I think we should concentrate on that. Uh, uh, I, I like uh, the proposal of Dr. Ali Karnibi for collecting the debt. I would like to, uh, 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 to advise or to uh, uh, advise, I can use advise uh, Aqua to take the lead of that in collecting the data. Uh, uh, in my point of view, we cannot take a, a good decision unless we have an accurate data, up-to-date data. We, we need to up-to-date, and I think Dr. Ali proposed a system which he, uh, Aqua applied to. Uh, I, I have many to say, but uh, because of your uh, limited time, I uh, thank you again, or thank you to be with you. Uh, but I'd like you to take more steps in uh, reusing the waste water. We have uh, different, we, everybody in our country is facing uh, scarcity for food. And uh, we uh, <coughs> have a chance in the next coming workshop to see uh, more words about water sanitation and reuse of water. Thank you again for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency, for this uh, comment. Of course, uh, we, we take the advices, especially when it comes from wisdom people, such as you and the other audience with us. Uh, to give you good uh, news that after these webinars, we and UN Habitat will start collecting the data and updating the data according nearly to the same criteria we did in the MDG plus. And uh, already we developed questionnaires, everything is ready. And uh, the Arab Water Ministerial Council already they took a decision uh, to support Aqua in collecting data. We'll be communicating with them also to support us on the uh, political level. And for that, I think we'll be collecting the same data, the same accuracy of data that we collected in the MDG Plus. I remember when we presented this to the ministers in the Arab Ministerial Council, at that time there was only one objection from one of the ministers about one photo that he said it doesn't belong to our country. So we went to the highest accuracy and the good thing that now we are building on this reliable data that we have. And we'll continue with the same spirit and the same procedures uh, with the gentlemen and our ex experts uh, with us now. Thank you, Your Excellency. We are ahead of time. Uh, thank you for all those ask questions. We, we are uh, monitoring some of the questions. We'll answer it through email. Uh, now we have to go for the big meal. Where are we? So we'll be having three speakers. Uh, those uh, gentlemen are in charge of monitoring the progress in the wastewater. Uh, the goal is the uh, 6.3.1. The first speaker will be Dr. Uh, Basim Hassan from the Ministry of Water and Irrigation in Jordan. Uh, Mr. By the way, if you remember, Jordan was of the uh, volunteer country uh, who uh, volunteered to give the data before going on to the process on international level. Uh, Dr. Basim, welcome, and uh, it's your floor for 15 minutes, please. Okay, thank you, Your Excellency. I hope you are hearing me. Yeah, sure, sure, very clear. Okay, thank you. 
thank you, Your Excellency, Engineer Khaldun Al Khushman, and uh, thank you all. Uh, good afternoon. I am Dr. Basim Hassan, uh, head of uh, division of SD6, uh, Ministry of Water and Irrigation. Uh, we have been uh, reporting uh, on SDGs uh, since uh, 2016. As His Excellency Engineer, Engineer Khaldun mentioned, uh, Jordan was uh, one of the countries that uh, committed uh, to its uh, voluntary um, uh, to, to the vo to the voluntary uh, uh, invitation uh, invitations by United Nations for for countries to uh, report on SDGs. The first voluntary national report was uh, issued in uh, 2015. The second uh, wa is being prepared uh, <clears throat> in coordination with our stakeholders and in coordination with Ministry of uh, Planning and International Cooperation. Between the, uh, these milestones, Jordan has not stopped reporting and uh, measuring and reporting on SDG 6 particularly and uh, on other SDGs as well. Uh, on, and, uh, with regard to uh, SDG 6 related to water and sanitation, the first baseline report was issued in 2000, uh, uh, 2016, and uh, it was uh, sent to the Minister of Planning and United Nations, uh, and it was adopted. It was the baseline for uh, SDG 6. We have to refer uh, to, to, the, to this baseline to compare and to benchmark. Uh, we have been working also on uh, reporting reporting on uh, the second round for SDGs. The second round was in 2018-2019. Now we are preparing for the third round. We are uh, starting mobilizing our resources to collect data to update the SDG 6 indicators for the third round. The third round is uh, delayed because of the corona crisis. And uh, we are now uh, putting uh, things again in the pipeline to continue reporting for the third round. Uh, Jordan has been selected as a pilot country to, for comparison and for uh, verification of the process of SDG 6. And um, it was uh, one of the pioneer countries and then the countries that committed to reporting all SDGs with custodian agencies uh, SDG 6 indicators, the 11 indicators. Uh, the second voluntary national report, uh, we um, we made dialogue with other SDGs like climate change, zero hunger related to nutrition, and uh, SDG 7 related to uh, energy. Uh, I want now to um, briefly discuss with you or present to you the table that presents the results for SDG 6 uh, 11 indicators. Please, uh, if you can, uh, if you can, uh, yeah, I, up I, to, I, the, to the slide. Which one? Which one, please? Uh, for uh, the table. The Mr. Table. Basin, he's he's out of his office and he's trying his best to to be with us. Uh, so that I am presenting uh, the presentation. He's talking from his mobile. Thank you, Mr. Basin, for. Thank you. It's my my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. So. Uh, I, I'll go to the fifth one. This one? Which one, Mr. Basim? Hello? Progress table. Progress table, yeah. Please. Can you see us? Can you see this? The... Uh, yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah. Uh, you, you... The screen? Yes, yes, this table. Thank you. Yes, Thank please, you. Yes. Uh... The, 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 I, I want to uh, to present uh, for you the indicate, indicators quickly. You are hearing me, yes? Uh, Hello? Yes, yes, clearly. Okay, thank you. 611 related to safely managed drinking water. We uh, we have a target of 100% for, for the agenda of SDG 6 2030. Um, uh, the, the, the value is, has a slight improvement because uh, Jor Jordan already is the uh, a good place with the regarding with respect to uh, safely managed drinking water for 621 sanitation we have uh, improvement on the sanitation uh, indicator from 84% to 88.5% and uh, the target is again uh, 100% for 
for the 631 related to treated wastewater, it's the right time to start collecting data on the, this indicator. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a uh, uh, big improvement in this uh, indicator. You know why, as experts in the water, uh, you know about the water sector. This, uh, this is related to uh, huge capital investments and uh, related to natural growth. So you improve, but on the other hand, the coverage is, is the same because there is no natural growth in population and in economic requirements and socioeconomic requirements in general. Uh, for uh, water quality, we have 92% in 2016 and the second round, 100% uh, our target in this is uh, always uh, the best, should be the best, it's 100%. For water use efficiency, we has uh, we had improvement in three three percent, and uh, the value for the second round four percent, and our target to be increasing over time for the water stress, one hundred thirty three, and uh, unfortunately the water stress worsened because of the over abstraction on groundwater, and uh, for the integrated water resource management we have improvement in this because we have uh, the utility performance management unit hosted in the Ministry of Water and other uh, initiatives uh, that improved the integrated water resource management. And uh, as you know, all there is a program, um, it's called wa wa water governance. It will tackle the point of reform in the water sector in general. And this w w uh, will affect the situation of integrated water resource management in Jordan. So the future will, will carry in its, uh, uh, in its uh, events. You will hear that uh, there, there will be a new, new structures for the water sector, but uh, we are not, uh, it's not necessarily in the short term, but uh, it will happen that there will be improvement in the integrated water resource management and always we are interested and uh, concerned about the stakeholder participation. Uh, uh, for uh, transboundary, uh, you know what is the status of transboundary and uh, the degree of operational agreement or level of operationality of agreements between Jordan and uh, the neighbors is uh, 21.9 for this time and the target is 40 percent because uh, there are agreements but they are not all operational next slide please and the last two six a one related to amount of water and sanitation uh, official development assistance that is coordinated with governmental budgets the value is the same and the last one for local participation and so uh, local community participation uh, the value is around uh, 17 percent and uh, these two indicators will be also should be updated this year if there is a change so uh, these 11 indicators are subject to change uh, due to natural growth new, due to uh, a new uh, a new strategy new policies and new initiatives and uh, subject to uh, changes sometimes there is no change in the indicator so we don't need to measure it again or to let's just review and in, the, in our new studies we put a benchmark uh, requirement to compare with other countries our uh, sdg framework is uh, synchronized with water policies and action plans water substitution and reuse policy to protect environment health and nature and water equality next slide please uh, water policy related to uh, groundwater sustainability. Uh, for example, municipal groundwater resources that are safe and protected. These are the policies uh, that uh, are uh, set under the umbrella of the national water strategy, which is be being updated now. Next, please. Uh, Consideration of water rights in shared transboundary water resources. It's related to SDG 6 as well. And the last, last one, please. Water reallocation. 
sustainable water use for our purposes, water stress and water use efficiency as well. As you note that SDG 6 is related to, uh, to other SDGs and related to, uh, to uh, the aggregate plans that cover the climate change, that, that cover the, the nexus between food, energy and water. And uh, it is uh, very important as a natural resource and uh, as my colleague mentioned that sanitation is also has to be considered and treated with water to re reduce the pollution this is all, all uh, interrelated and uh, this is very important to sustain the lives for uh, coming generations and to keep the planet safe thank you thank you dr basim you save some time because we are already late uh, yani we are aware of what we are doing on uh, institutionalizing the process in the water sector and we are waiting still the water law to be to be adopted that will uh, govern the relation between different, different stakeholders in water sector in the, in the country uh, I give the floor uh, for uh, question. Sorry, I give the floor now to Mr. Hassan Shatti, the representative of Mr. Hassan Shatti, Mr. Al Arabi, Sayyid Al Arabi from Onas, Tunis. Onas is uh, the national company for wastewater treatment and collection in uh, Tunisia. Myself, I visited uh, uh, this uh, company and I saw how they are very protective in the reuse, especially in the pilot areas and uh, where they produce uh, medical herbs, uh, they are producing also honey, uh, many, many good success stories. The floor of use, Mr. Al Arabi. تفضل تفضل مستر العربي لك الوقت معك وباللغة العربية و15 دقيقة لطفا شكرا شكرا في البداية أريد أن أشكر جمعية أكوا على إتاحة الفرصة للمشاركة في هذه الندوة كما أود أن أبلغكم اعتذار سيد حسان الشتي على تقديم المداخلة بعد تعذر حضور عليه للتزام مهني طارق نمر الآن إلى المداخلة تفضل مستر العربي سامعينك يعني الأثر على الشاشة تمام ثوان طيب الصفحة الموالية خلال هذه المداخلة سنقدم في مرحلة أولى نعطي فكرة يعني على انخراط تونس في مسار خطة التنمية المستدامة 2030 ثم مساهمة الديوان الوطني للتطهير بتونس في إنجاز الهدف السادس لأجندة التنمية المستدامة 2030 ثم في مرحلة أخيرة يعني موضوع هذه الندوة هو تجربة تونس مجال إدارة عملية متابعة بيانات ومعلومات الصرف الصحي من خلال متابعة تنفيذ الغاية 6-3 كما نعلم جميعا يعني سنة 2015 شهدت يعني انطلاق مسار تنمية مستدامة الذي والتي عنوانه أجندة 2030 والتي تتضمن 17 هدفا و169 غاية وترسم أجندة التنمية المستدامة 2030 خريطة الطريق ذات رؤية استراتيجية للدول والأطراف الفاعلة من أجل تكريس الجهود لخلق عالم ينعم فيه الجميع بالمساواة والازدهار المستدام مع الحفاظ على موارد كوكبنا يعني من الاستنزاف غير الكفء وغير المنصف بالنسبة للأجيال القادمة تونس كانت من ضمن البلدان التي صادقت على هذه الأجندة سنة 2015 
وتبنت أهدافها وتعهدت بالعمل على تحقيقها وقد انخرطت فعليا في تنفيذ هذه الأجندة بداية من سنة 2016 عبر أدراجها في المخطط القماسي للتنمية 2016-2020 وذلك من خلال إدماج أهداف التنمية يعني أجندة 2030 مختلف يعني 17 هدف تونس حاولت إدراجهم في استراتيجية التنمية المرسمة بالمخطط الخماسي 2016-2020 ومن أهم هنا نذكر أهم المحطات التي تبرز مساهمة يعني انخراط تونس في مسار خطة التنمية المستدامة 2016 شهدت إمضاء مذكرة تفاهم بين الحكومة التونسية ومنظمة الأمم المتحدة لوضع برنامج مشترك لمتابعة وتقييم وعدات تقارير حول مدى تنفيذ أهداف التنمية المستدامة سنة 2018 شهدت كذلك توقيع على برنامج عمل مشترك بين الحكومة التونسية ممثلة في وزارتي الشؤون الخارجية ووزارة التنمية والاستثمار والتعاون الدولي مع منظمة الأمم المتحدة ذلك لإنشاء نظام للرصد والتقييم والإبلاغ عن أهداف التنمية المستدامة في تونس. ذلك تم أحداث لجنة عالية المستوى تضم ممثلين عن كل فاعلين من حكومة وخبراء ممثلين مجتمع مدني متابعة تنفيذ 17 الهدف الواردة بإجندة التنمية 2030 كما تم سنة 2019 إعداد وعرض تقرير الوطني التوعي الأول حول تنفيذ التنمية المستدامة أمام المنتدى السياسي الأمم المتحدة رفيع المستوى في شهر جويلة سنة 2019 كذلك ومن أهم المؤشرات والإنجازات اللي تبرز مدى تقدم تونس في تنفيذ أهداف التنمية المستدامة نسجل هنا تونس تحصلت على المرتبة الأولى إفريقيا ضمن 58 دولة في مجال تحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة وذلك وفق تقرير أصدره المركز الأفريقي لأهداف التنمية المستدامة لسنة 2020 حيث بلغت نسبة إنجاز تونس في مجال أهداف التنمية المستدامة 67.1% مقابل 54% كمعدل بالنسبة للدول الأفريقية كذلك يعني في خلال هذه سنقدم يعني تقدم إنجاز الهدف السادس يعني سنركز هنا على الهدف السادس لأجل التنمية المستدامة 2030 والذي يهدف إلى الهدف السادس الذي يهدف إلى توفير المياه النظيفة والمرافق الصحية لجميع الناس. الصياغة الرسمية هي ضمان توافر المياه والمرافق الصحية وإدارتها المستدامة للجميع. والهدف السادس كما تعلمون يضم ثمانية غايات يجب تحقيقها بحلول عام 2030 ويقاس تقدم باستخدام 11 مؤشر. ويرتبط كذلك الهدف السادس من أهداف التنمية المستدامة ارتباطا وثيقا بأهداف أخرى الأهداف الأخرى يعني 17 التنمية المستدامة إذ يساعد على تحسين صرف إذ يساعد يعني الصرف الصحي يساعد على جعل المدن أكثر استدامة وهو ما يساهم في تحقيق الهدف 13 كذلك الهدف السادس يساهم في مقاومة تغيرات مناخية بالتالي يعني له انعكاس إيجابي على الهدف 13 متعلق بالتغيرات المناخية كذلك الصرف الساحي يساهم في حماية الشريط الساحلي والموارد البحرية من تلوث الماء وهو طبعا له يعني أثر إيجابي على الهدف 14 بالنسبة لمساهمة الديوان الوطني للتطهير بما أن الديوان الوطني للتطهير هو يعني يعنى بالصرف الساحي وبالتالي تبرز مساهمته في على مستوى الغاية 6-2 المتعلقة بتعميم خدمات الصرف الصحي والغاية 6-3 التي تعنى بمعالجة المياه المستعملة وإعادة استعمالها نأتي الآن إلى الموضوع الأساسي للندوة وهو تجربة تونس في مجال إدارة عملية متابعة بيانات ومعلومات الصرف الصحي تتم متابعة تنفيذ الغاية 6-2 عن طريق المؤشر العالمي 6-2-1 
وهو يعني الذي ينص على ان الذي يتمثل في نسبه السكان الذين يستعملون خدمات الصرف الصحي السليم ويتم تتبع هذا المؤشر من خلال مؤشرين فرعيين يعني ينقسم الى مؤشرين فرعيين المؤشر الاول هو نسبه السكان الذين يستخدمون خدمات صرف صحي مدارة بطريقة آمنة والمؤشر الفرعي الثاني هو نسبة السكان الذين لديهم مرافق أساسية لغسل اليدين في بيوتهم يقوم ديون وطني للتطهير بإصدار البيانات المتعلقة بالمؤشر الفرعي الأول يعني حول يعني نسبة السكان الذين يستخدمون خدمات صرف صحي مدارة بطريقة عامة أما المؤشر الثاني الذي هم نسبة السكان الذين لديهم مرافق أساسية لغسل اليدين في بيوتهم فتم متابعته من وزارة الصحة. هنا نأتي إلى إنجازات يعني المؤشرات بالنسبة لسنة 2001 بالنسبة للمؤشر الفرعي الأول نسبة المرتبطين بالشبكة العمومية للتطهير بالمدن المتبنية من طرف الديوان الوطني للتطهير هي 76.8 هذا بالنسبة لسنة 2021 كذلك نسبة المرتبطين بالشبكة العمومية للتطهير بكامل تراب الجمهورية حضري وريفي هي 63.2 هذا بالنسبة للتطهير الجماعي نسب هذه تهم التطهير الجماعي النسبة الأولى تهم عندما نقول مدن متبنات نقصد المدن التي يتدخل الديوان بها ويقوم باستغلال الشبكات يعني شبكات الصرف الصحي من قنوات ومحطات تطهير بما يعني ويبلغ عدد المدن المتبنات من طرف الديوان 193 بلديه من جمله 350 بلديه و العدد الجملي للسكان بهذه البلديات هو يعني تقريبا 80% من جملة السكان بكامل تراب الجمهورية وكذلك أهم الأنشطة الاقتصادية تتركز في هذه المدن الكبرى يعني المدن المدن المتبنات هي المدن التي تشهد التي ذات كثافة سكانية عالية وبها أنشطة اقتصادية هامة المؤشر الثالث وهو الذي وهو الأقرب يعني يمثل المؤشر الفرعي للتنمية المستدامة هو نسبة السكان المنتفعين بخدمات التطهير الذي يضم المرت... يعني التطهير الجماعي والفرد يعني المرتبطين بشبكات التطهير التي ينجزها الديوان والتطهير وكذلك السكان الذين يعني مجهزين ب يعني منشآت تطهير فرد هذه النسبة تبلغ 95% حسب نتائج تعداد للسكان والسكنى لسنة 2014 هذه النسبة لا يتم تتبعها من من طرف الديوان يعني تتم يعني عند أعداد عند يعني في تونس كل عشر سنوات تقوم الدولة التونسية بإنجاز تعداد للسكان والسكنة لكامل تراب الجمهورية يعني بصفة يعني يعني يتم إصدار البيانات حقيقية يعني من خلال يعني زيارات لكل تراب الجمهورية كذلك تتم متابعة الغاية ستة ثلاثة ستة ثلاثة وهي التي تتم متابعتها من طرف عن طريق المؤشر العالم ستة ثلاثة واحد الذي يتمثل في نسبة مياه الصرف الصحي المعالجة بطريقة آمنة وكذلك المؤشر العالمي الثاني نسبة المسطحات المائية ذات مياه محيطة جيدة 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 النوعية الديوان يختص بالمؤشر العالمي الأول ستة ثلاثة واحد الذي يهم نسبة مياه الصرف الصحي المعالجة بطريقة آمنة أما المؤشر الثاني فتتم متابعته من الوكالة الوطنية لحماية المحيط بالنسبة لإنجازات سنة 2021 للمؤشر العالمي ستة ثلاثة واحد نجد أن كمية مياه الصرف الصحي المجمعة بمناطق تدخل الدواء يعني بالبلديات متبنات 193 بلديه 
تبلغ كمية مياه السرطة الصحي 290 مليون متر مكعب كمية نأتي الآن إلى كمية المياه المعالجة تبلغ 288 مليون متر مكعب وهو ما يمكن من نسبة مياه معالجة تبلغ 99% يعني 99% من المياه التي يتم تجميعها في قنوات التطهير يتم معالجتها عن طريق محطات تطهير محطات في تونس يعني توجد 124 محطة تطهير تمكن من معالجة 99% من جملة المياه المجمعة بمناطق تدخل الديوان بالنسبة لإعادة استعمال المياه المعالجة تبلغ النسبة 22% يعني هذه النسبة تهم مختلف مجالات الاستعمال يعني استعمال في مجال زراعة فلاحة يعني في مجال زراعة السقوية في مجال السياحي عبر ري ملاعب الصولجات وكذلك تغذية يعني المائدة المائية يتم استعمال مياه المعالجة في تغذية المائدة المائية النسبة العامة تعطي 22% في كذلك أخي العربي لديك دقيقة و15 ثانية حبيبي تسلم يا سيدي تسلم كذلك الديوان يشارك في في نظام دعم السياسات لتطبيق الهدف السادس من اهداف التنميه المستدامه اس دي جي بي اس اس في اطار مشروع المياه في العالم الذي نريده تم سنه 2016 احداث نظام دعم السياسات لتطبيق الهدف السادس من اهداف التنميه المستدامه من قبل معهد جامعة الأمم المتحدة للمياه والبيئة والصحة وبمشاركة خمسة دول من ضمنهم تونس يعني تونس وكوريا وكوستاريكا وباكستان وغانا وهو بمثابة أداة تساعد صانعي القرار على قياس التقدم في تحقيق الهدف السادس وكذلك مدى وجود بيئة ملائمة لتحقيق الهدف السادس من أهداف المستدامة من خلال الرصد والتقييم وإعداد التقارير حتى سنة 2030 يشمل هذا النظام ستة مكونات كما هو مبين بالشكل يعني الرسم الموالي وذلك لتقييم مدى وجود بيئه ملائمه لتحقيق الهدف السادس كما يشمل يعني مكون اضافي وهو الحاله الذي يقدم معطيات عن مدى التقدم في تنفيذ المؤشرات وتحت اشراف وزاره الفلاحه التونسيه تم تكوين فريق عمل يعنى بهذا النظام حيث تم خلال المرحلة الأولى سنة سنتي 2017-2018 تكييف النظام للخصوص خصوصية البلاد التونسية كما تم خلال المرحلة الثانية خلال سنتي 2019-2020 إدخال معطيات لتقييم مدى التقدم لتنفيذ الهدف السادس ومدى وجود بيئة مواتية للتنفيذ مع تنظيم ورشات إقليمية لتبادل التجارب في مجال تحقيق الهدف السادس ويتم حالياً الإعداد للشروع في المرحلة الثالثة لسنتين 2021 التي تهدف إلى مزيد التعريف بهذا النظام وتشجيع الدول الأخرى للانخراط في هذا النظام يعني في نهاية المرحلة الثانية تم تسجيل مشاركة 34 دولة في ورشات إقليمية ودولية حول تطبيق هذا النظام شكرا على المتابعة شكرا سيد العربي على هذه المعلومات القيمة وتونس يعني تعتبر من الدول التي قد تساهم بنشر المعرفة أيضا في مجالات الريوز كما هو الحال في عدة دول أخرى كعمان والأردن والمغرب والآن جمهورية مصر العربية تتقدم في هذا المجال فنشكر كل التجربة الثمينة اللي قدمت لنا إياها الأخوة الآن we actually let me summarize in English very difficult now for the time 
Tunis was among the uh, countries who uh, signed on the agenda of 2015 for the uh, global and SDGs uh, goals. And they were engaged in uh, to be one of the uh, of the uh, the plan, the, the investment plan 2016-2020 that was engaged in the uh, strategic advisory group for 2016-20. They signed a memorandum of understanding between uh, with, the, with the United Nations organization to put a monitoring program for uh, monitoring uh, the SDGs. And again, they sign another agreement with the many ministries within Tunis to form a national team containing the Diwan uh, al-Tatir, ONAS, a Minister of uh, uh, Investment, Ministry of Planning, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, and they sign this agreement with the international uh, with, with the United Nations organization. Uh, they made a, a high committee, a committee uh, containing many of the uh, experts and uh, from representative from the local community uh, to execute the 17th goal that is available in the national agenda and in the investment agenda 2030. And also they have presented a national uh, report about achieving the, the sustainable goals for 2019. They present that in the uh, webinar or in the uh, forum a political forum for the United Nations uh, conducted in July 2019. Tunis got the first position, the best among 20, 50, 20, 52 countries in monitoring uh, the Millennium Go uh, uh, Sustainable Goals uh, 2030. For the sixth uh, goal, Uh, they, they put a plan to achieve these goals within 2030 and they are measuring it with the 13 indicators uh, within the SDGs. Uh, on us, also a contribution in the national uh, agenda for the sustainable development. Uh, they are, uh, they have a good role in executing the six goal among the 2030. And for that, they are also executing for 6.2 that related to uh, uh, better and expanding the uh, serve, uh, the wastewater uh, treatment. And for the goal 6.3 that uh, deals with uh, treatment, the wastewater, and the reuse. Also, uh, the, the ONAS, ONAS, they are also uh, following up the achievement in 6.2 within the international indicator 6.2.1. That is how many percent, how much percentage are using the proper wastewater facilities and the result uh, this includes two indicators those people who are using very safe as uh, wastewater uh, services and those people are using elementary services for cleaning hands and using toilet the second indicator is followed up by the ministry of uh, health in tunis while the first one is uh, uh, followed up by ONAS itself. Now, uh, for 2021, the achievements were in the first indicators, percentage of people using 
common and public uh, wastewater treatment in the cities was 76.8 percentage, while people in the uh, countryside and in the civil uh, within the cities total using all the types of uh, sanitation facilities are 63.2 uh, also uh, onas is also uh, following up progress in the indicator 6.3.1 that's the percentage of wastewater using the wastewater uh, facilities in very safe uh, way and also they are uh, in charge of uh, all the data related to the 6.3.1 and 6.3.2 at the end we would like uh, to thank Mr. Al Arabi for very a comprehensive and very well uh, prepared uh, presentation and I would like to apologize for not translating all the numbers because it is ne it needs more than uh, 15 minutes more of your valuable time. Thank you and uh, at the end now we'll be switching off from listening to utilities to listen for the regulator. My friend is uh, reminding me, be careful of Mr. Hamedi. Mr. Hamedi is the chairman of the uh, monitoring. Uh, Mr. Hamedi is in charge and he's the, uh, he's the water, uh, water, uh, sorry, regulatory body, water and wastewater utility presentative. He is also presenting all the regulators from Arab region in the board of director. And Mr. Hamedi is very well experienced and hope that you have the time to look for all the publications that came out of his respected regulatory council. The floor of yours, Abu Said. Thank you very much, Khaldun. Thank you very much. It's a good opportunity to speak from regulatory point of view. Uh, can you see my presentation? Uh, no, sir, no. If you want to, I can uh, manage it from, uh, from my seat, if you can't. Uh, okay, there is a share uh, button down. Yes. Yeah, it's a green one. Yeah, please press it. And then choose the presentation and press it again and press share, please. Can you see it now? Yeah, we are waiting him, waiting for him to uh, have a stand. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please, uh, Mr. Al we, we can't see the presentation. If you want you to, can. yeah, I can uh, do it from my side. Yeah. Well, let, let, let me try again, please. Let me try again. Yeah, yeah. Because it has modified. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, uh, until I go through the presentation, uh, as you know, Palestine has entered a new uh, area in 2014 while we have established the Water Sector Regulatory Council. And that was mandated to monitor all water and wastewater services in, in Palestine. Uh, that has... Uh... Can you please do it from your side? Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Well, uh, as I've just said, the uh, Palestine uh, has established the Water Security Council, and that was mandated to monitor water and wastewater services. Now, what does it mean? Uh, in Palestine, we have almost 300 uh, water service providers and almost 76 uh, wastewater service providers, including 19 in Gaza. Uh, to, to be able to do that and to be res respondent 
to uh, all international agreements, local agreements, regional agreements, uh, we have said that the uh, WSRC or the regulator is to make data available uh, not only to meet the SDGs requirements, uh, including reduction of pollution, uh, minimizing of hazardous chemicals, or uh, increasing those who are uh, using wastewater safe facilities, but also to be as a comprehensive uh, overall development tool in, in Palestine. Uh, uh, which means that uh, we are trying to identify not only uh, pollution sources uh, and try to mitigate those, but also to provide the cabinet of ministers with a tool, which is the data that we have in terms of water and wastewater services and uh, efficiencies. Now, uh, to be able to be respondent uh, and to say that you are collecting data, there has to be a national commitment. And these are some of the experiences and the lessons that we have learned. Uh, unless you have a national commitment to collect data and use data, of course, verified data, and you are legally covered in terms of institutional mandate and in terms of bylaws and procedures, you may not be respondent to your data requirements. Of course, after we were established by law, we have developed our monitoring tools, modules, indicators, and produced a number of indices, one for water, one for fair wastewater, including what indicators we are going to use, what definitions, what formulas, importance of each indicator, benchmarks, uh, related indicators, the source of data, verification tools, uh, and procedures to improve uh, the indicators. Uh, of course, we have the ability uh, by experience now to analyze and draw impacts, and these are transferred to the cabinet, as I've said, to, uh, to, to be used. Now, the service providers that we have in Palestine, uh, they, they, these are uh, local authorities. As I've said, we took about 300. Uh, these are your water utilities. They are uh, private sector, NGO, joint service councils, uh, as well as uh, some of the uh, NGOs. Uh, what do we monitor? Of course, we don't monitor uh, until now the on-site sanitation, but we monitor the wastewater collection, wastewater treatment and reuse, but we don't monitor until now the sludge uh, treatment or handling or disposal. Uh, we have created our database, but uh, of course, uh, there are some hindrances, there are some obstacles in building a database in, in a country, especially in Palestine, because as I said, we talk about 300 service providers and we talk about areas A and B and C. Some of, uh, part of that area A is under our, our uh, control, uh, area P joint control with Israel and area C is completely under the control of Israel. So collecting data from uh, the, the, that area is still uh, not an easy job. Uh, but regardless, we have created a database where we have uh, 300 uh, profiles for 300 service providers. Uh, within those, we do collect 300, 280 variables on water, and we collect almost 100 variables on wastewater, and that's all published on our uh, water regulatory information system, WRIS, in, in Palestine. Uh, under that uh, database, you can find data for 300 uh, service providers uh, in water and 70 plus service providers in wastewater, uh, including, as I've said, 100 variables on wastewater only. And out of those, we select only uh, 21 indicators on water and we publish annually and we collect uh, uh, 18 uh, uh, wastewater indicators, and we could uh, publish uh, uh, annually. Of course, the, 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 the variables that we have, as I've said, are uh, almost 400 on water and wastewater, and all of those who, who are those who are interested can really look into our database and have a look at. Now, to be able to, to, to come up with uh, uh, tools that we have, we have, of course, the uh, data collection modules that we uh, annually present to service providers and uh, we uh, 
explain, we sometimes we update. Uh, we have uh, the database and uh, people can uh, upload uh, their uh, data directly. As those who have the uh, monitoring uh, uh, information and those who have uh, computers and, 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 and networks. When I say those, because as I've said, out of the 300, there are uh, some of those who are really tiny, little, small service providers who, uh, especially in the uh, villages and uh, local councils, who may not be able to provide data online. And those, we do collect data manually. We go there by, with our questionnaires, our field workers, our staff, and collect data uh, from time to time uh, on an annual basis. And right now, we collect it on a quarterly basis. Uh, of course, we have the training manuals. Uh, we have on-the-job training, and we uh, do our uh, publications, uh, as Khaldun said. They are all on our database, and you can see few publications every year. But uh, what uh, we have referred to is to peer-to-peer -peer, uh, sort of learning. Uh, each year, we uh, have the 300 service providers under one roof, and we go through their data and try to uh, look through the data and lead them uh, sort of question each other on the quality uh, and uh, accuracy of their data. Of course, it's not only uh, uh, performance data to Google it. We collect uh, the, the governance and integrity data, uh, operational inspection data, uh, tariff-related data for reviews, uh, customers' uh, complaints, and even uh, water supply agreements. All of those are part of the data that we collect. Uh, these are the monitoring tools that I've just referred to. Please, next. Uh, <coughs> as I've said, not all of the data that we collect, we do publish. On our database, the uh, 200 variables on water are there, and the uh, 100 variables on wastewater are there. But the, those which are published, uh, which are we are uh, really certain of the accuracy of the data, uh, only uh, 21 indicators on water and 19 indicators in, in wastewater. But again, other reports are available like governance, like wastewater operation inspection, like tariff, like customer complaints. All of those are valid. Now, uh, one of the, the issues that uh, I would like to, to convey as a message to everybody who would like to uh, collect data on water and wastewater is that it is a costly process. Data is, is costly. And unless you have your national commitment. Uh, in our case, uh, we report twice to the, the cabinet of ministers, and we meet twice with the prime minister to uh, brief him on what we have collected and the added value of what we have collected. Uh, we have unified data collection. It is only now through the regulator. Uh, Water Authority uh, used that data. The PCPS used that data. Other ministries and institutions used that data. And now we are trying to reach universities and the private sector also to use that data to unify the efforts of Palestine to say that we have one voice in terms of water and wastewater data. Uh, of course, everybody is, is part of the collection process. Everybody is part of the verification and everybody is part of the publication. Uh, th that's what we are doing. Uh, as I've said, it is uh, good to have data for uh, to meet the SDGs, but at the same time, it's really important that you use the time, you use the variables, that you use the data, not only for SDGs, but also to be part of your overall uh, developmental uh, targets as a national plan. Uh, we distribute data, we have, we give access to all ministries, all researchers, all institutions who are interested, and all of those who are listening to me now, anyone who is interested in data on water and wastewater in Palestine, you are most welcome just to send me an email and we'll provide you with, with full access to our data. We have nothing to hide. Uh, those data which we uh, have doubts in the quality, we say this is uh, not for publishing, uh, but, but any data uh, other than that, we make it open for the public. Uh, I've used more of the 15 minutes, uh, Mr. Khaldun. I apologize for that. Uh, if you give me time, I can speak until tomorrow, but I'll stop here and leave some time for questions if there is any. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. We'd like to give you a star on your shoulders for saving five minutes. Uh, let me... Uh, remark few uh, facts. First of all, 
Palestinian Regulatory Council is an independent one by law. It's the only one which belongs to the cabinet. It's not, uh, not under the umbrella of the service providers. And this is uh, from legal wise, give them the power to measure the performance of the service providers in Palestine. Secondly, uh, I think they are the, the only regulator which talks not only about the percentage of uh, if everything, percentage of quality, percentage of uh, sampling, but, but they are covering all the services and the key performance indicators that they have used. It's very reliable and uh, it can fit for most of the Arab region. Uh, the same thing we have in Jordan, but in Jordan, it's not totally independent. The case in Egypt, it belongs to the Ministry of Housing. In Abu Dhabi, which is the fourth uh, regulator we have, they are also independent, belong to the uh, cabinet. From this uh, place, I would like to say we have to encourage and support the regulatory body. And I quote, I quote from my uh, uh, godfather of Aqua, Dr. Abdul Qawi Khalifa, that the water sector is a triangle of three sides service provider customers and regulator. Without having the three, there will be no reliability and no transparency for the people. And now I will open the floor for discussion with after thanking everybody. Dr. Bassin left us from Wamawi, Mr. Futter and Delegation. They have a visit from Her uh, Royal Highness Princess Sumaya. But we can, any of our uh, Jordanian guys over here, there is a question from Miss Batul. She's asking, Batul, are you on the screen? Hello? This is the... Hello? Okay, I can read in, in her, uh, on behalf of her. Ms. Patul, please unmute yourself. Yeah, please ask her. Can you hear my voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, please go on. Okay. Please, please. Uh, I am actually asking only, uh, I, I missed uh, the first, uh, the first, I think, one hour from this. Um, uh, can can you please, can you please say your job? From which organization you are? I, I am from Bahrain. Uh, I am from Ministry of Works. Uh, I'm from uh, Treated Effluent Quality Control. Okay. okay. Um, um, my question is, uh, because really it is uh, challenging in our system here in the wastewater sector here in Bahrain, uh, it is very uh, challenging for us to monitor the trade waste. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we we we're just doing it now manually, uh, but it is uh, mo in most of the cases um, we we cannot catch the violation once it happens. Oh. What are the okay. what is the question exactly, please, Batul? My, my question is: What is being used for trade waste monitoring in Jordan? How is the system? And if there is any online monitoring system or early monitoring system, is there, uh, you, you are practicing that in Jordan? In the wastewater treatment, you mean? Or Not in the, in the network. Network, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and unfortunately, there is no uh, uh, digital system. Uh, my colleagues from the water sector, in Jordan are with us, they can also add on the few words that I'm going to talk. But we have a monitoring uh, manuals for that. We are 
thing either for uh, municipal water or industrial water. And we have defined the hazard materials that not allowed to be do, do, uh, to be sent to the uh, collection system. Uh, but I think there is no uh, digitized system to control that. Anyone, Asim or any of our friends from uh, Jordanian Water Utilities, can you elaborate, please? Asim Bataini or any one of the friends? You so, may Khaldun, Khaldun, if you allow me, uh, yeah. if, what we have here in Palestine, as I've said, we have prepared the wastewater monitoring index uh, where we have uh, 60 indicators for collection and 41 for uh, treatment. And uh, we depend on the laboratories uh, within the facilities, but at the same time, we make quarterly visits to each of these facilities and try to collect and verify data as we as much as we can. Uh, if I uh, hit the tool correctly, when she said trade, I think if we talk about industri industrial wastewater, it is by law now that no wastewater facility can directly connect the system unless they have primary treatment. Uh, which which means that uh, at least we minimize the uh, POD and COD loading to the system. Thank you. Uh, I think she was also, uh, Ms. Patul is uh, talking about the general network. I have uh, on the screen Iyad Hamdi, uh, he's from uh, water sector in Jordan. Yeah, and we work together. Iyad, me elaborate on that. Can you, Iyad? Yeah. There is another one here. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, in English. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the number of people who are in the world. There is a number of people who are in the world. There are in our uh, central lab in Jordan. Uh, a department for uh, monitoring uh, in uh, online. There are four, uh, it is in, uh, in starting in, in the beginning. There are four uh, West, uh, water treatment uh, uh, is uh, connected. Asamra and uh, Madaba and uh, Assault and uh, South Jordan. It is at the beginning online. And uh, there are another uh, uh, online connecting for uh, for uh, Canal uh, uh, Abdullah. Yeah, King Canal Abdullah. Uh, 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 blinking water. Thank you. But I think Batul was talking about collection systems, collection network. Is it Batul? Yes, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and for the time being, I share with Iyad, we don't have for uh, uh, wastewater collection. But we do have for the water resources and the catchment areas, suppose like Sadd al uh, the, the dams in Jordan and uh, King Abdullah Canal, which is the main raw water supplier for Amman after treatment, of course. But this is the beginning as Ahmadi. But also we can, as Aqua, connect you with the Palestinian regulatory body and we can help in that. Uh, please type your email if you can. Okay. Uh, as you said, we are more than willing to provide Patul and anyone mm -hmm. else with all the modules and the tools that we have. Okay. Thanks a lot. Asma Hussein, please. Hello. Asma. Dear Asma. Hello? Yes. Are you, are you yes. yes, yes. Yeah, I think you are Egyptian. <laughs> but identify your your company, please. Uh, uh, a company in Egypt. Tana Said. Okay, you welcome, please. Please, thanks. You had a question, uh, Ms. Asma? You read no, no. We no, that no. you have a question or uh, or anything to ask. No, doctor. No. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Uh, okay. There is uh, one called Bill. He wanted to, to answer a question, but please uh, uh, identify yourself. Okay. Yeah. Please identify yourself. Hello. Yeah, tafadal, samaynak. Uh, my name is Farouk Al Umari. I'm from RSS uh, at, uh, from Jordan. Uh, I just uh, I understand that uh, Ms. Batul needs uh, to know about the uh, online monitoring system. Uh, we at RSS uh, have uh, 13 stations online system that measure some of parameters uh, and provide an hourly data about temperature, pH, EC, and COD, uh, NO3, I think this can be useful to monitor the discharge of wastewater treatment. Uh, we are uh, accredited from uh, to 10 years uh, with UCAS accreditation. I think uh, this can be useful for uh, to monitor the discharge of uh, wastewater treatment plants. Thank you. yet okay thank you Farouk. thank you Farouk. it's good to hear from you and uh, our friend dr al muayyad uh, again uh, you have i know that you have good experience in that again we are but is concentrating on the network uh مخارج المحطات yes we have مع ذلك احنا اي شيء بيحتاجوه الاخوان في البحرين احنا موجودين من خلال الجمعية ومن خلال مركز التدريب او اليوتيليتيز الاردنية زي العقبة لانه اظن عندهم سيستم في ليك any questions more yeah uh, if there is any question please raise your hand to to let us unmute you there is two questions uh, these two Okay, one from Muhammad Ali, please. Do you have manual for wastewater reuse network, monitoring and operation? Yes, we have. And we have very good certified training programs. Uh, it is certified from ABC, Association Board of Certification Florida. And we have manuals in reuse. Uh, we cover all the wastewater collection wastewater treatment, industrial wastewater reuse, uh, wastewater quality analysis, sampling, radiation, accreditation. So it's available anytime. Please write your email. We can share you some of the information. Another uh, question. Please. I mean we in Aqua. Yeah, yeah. Aqua. And you can have a copy, Mr. Mohammed, inshallah. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, just only outlines. Uh, does, we, we will take another question, which is uh, from Absol, Absol please. Thank you a lot for uh, Absol, uh, attacking Absol, thank you a lot for this info and the great management. I hope to hear it during the upcoming webinars, Rule of Civil Society Organization in Sanitation file and the follow-up to achieve achieving goals, successful experience from other countries. Yes, we'll give time. Actually, we're planning to give two, three minutes for follow-up from, uh, we agreed with you, but we were late for 15 minutes. So I think with the coming one, suppose in water governance, we may give you, uh, you as NGO and APSO, uh, and our partners with Aqua will give you a small uh, space for talking about what you like. I promise in the third one on 19th of July, and we put it as a remark, and my colleagues in UN Habitat, they are listening to us. Thank you, thank you, okay. everybody. We are only delayed for six minutes, but we can take maybe, maybe 10 to 15 minutes uh, for a question and uh, conclusion. Uh, if there are any question, please uh, raise your hand. If there is not uh, any, one of the speakers who want to add something uh, at the end, if there is. Please. Uh, okay, Mr. Khaldun, no, no more questions. Now for uh, closing and uh, conclusions, uh, 
Uh, we are planning to give the two uh, keynote speakers, Mr. Karnim and Mr. Florent, to uh, summarize the findings. And if any uh, more for one minute additional, for one more two people. You have Mr. Florent, Mr. Uh, Karnib, two minutes each. And if there is somebody who wants to add one thing, we'll give him one minute only. Please. Mean uh, Start with Mr. Ali, alphabet order. Please, Mr. Ali. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, thank you, Khaldun, for this interesting webinar. And thank you for all the participants and their uh, active engagement. And this is very, very actually, um, uh, I, I, I met uh, several webinars, but this is, was very, very active. So thank you, everybody, and th thank you, and Habitat, and all the speakers. Um, yes, for the for the for concluding, uh, I would say that uh, finally we need we need a mechanism to collect data and and data from utilities uh, that we can rely on and we can present it as, as accurate data or, or authentic data and to calculate the indicators and also to build on this data for water governance and policy settings. So it's important this, this to complete the cycle towards sustainable development, we need to advise, we need to present uh, uh, advice on, on policy setting based on the data collected. This would be a, a useful uh, use of the data, of the effort of collecting the data and presenting as a progress for the SDG 6.3.1. Uh, and, and actually, we need a capacity building in the region, particularly for the industrial water collecting and uh, also for the parameters that we, uh, I mean, the, the parameters related to the quality of effluent and, and influent. Uh, this is important also. Um, and also the, the wastewater generated from Isaac, um, uh, let's say clusters uh, from agriculture or, or, or other clusters in Isaac also needs some capacity building in the region because it's a new, a new on, on the region. So we need also to do some, some introduction for that, for the utilities to collect these data. Thank you. Uh, the floor is all for, for, for you, Florian. Thank you very much, Ali. You already... Uh capture a lot of uh, things. And uh, I also would like to thank everyone. And I completely agree, there is a lot of uh, participation. It's quite active and it's quite, uh, yeah, it's very nice for us to see some uh, interest because uh, we always speak about sanitation, access to sanitation and the uh, wash, but not so much on water. And we see this importance and especially in your region and uh, water scarcity will have dramatic uh, impact, I mean, in terms of migration, of refugee, in terms of economy impact. It's a limitation that is so important. So improving water uh, management uh, passed through uh, a better wastewater monitoring. And uh, that's really nice also to see the importance of reuse. I also really appreciate the, the highlight on industry because as I show, uh, we don't have so much on industry. And uh, we, we, we have to move from a, a much more uh, smart uh, water management. I mean, here we, we used to use drinking water to watch the street. I mean, it, we cannot do that anymore. We see even in Europe, we have some water limitation now everywhere. And also the pollutant, as it was mentioned by agriculture in terms of quantity, but in terms of quality, having in mind that we really need to do much more. And I'd really appreciate the the the, the activities, the question and the different the panelists and the different person who, who took the floor and it's it's very encouraging and I hope that uh, we can move forward with the following webinars and also uh, continuously uh, try to collaborate and support you and I really like to to thanks again all the participants and aqua for organizing this uh, webinar. Thank you very much over. Thank you thank you Florent. We have two uh, also uh, people asked to contribute. Mr. Ahmed Al Azam, if I know, is a consultant. And it's a pleasure to have you again, partner. And Miss or Mrs. Shada, uh, one minute each. And I please ask if anybody needs recommendation that we can put it in our reports, we can have one or two more, please. And because we are going to, to develop a report with our consultants, Mr. Kernib, 
that will be available to everybody. Please, Ahmed. Hello, Mr. Ahmed Azam, if you have any question. Okay, we'll start with Shada and we'll get back to him uh, soon. Uh, Ms. Shada, please, uh, you raise your hand. Please unmute yourself. Ms. Shada, please unmute yourself. Uh, okay, uh, is there, an, uh, is there uh, is any question from any other one, please? Raise your hand. Okay, Dr. Ahmed, please. Doctor? Yeah, uh, what about Asna? Uh, Asna Hussein, is there is any question from your side? Okay, no one is, there is no more question, please. Uh, at the end, uh, allow me, Jose, you need to add something? At the, uh, since you are representing uh, you worked hard in that, please. You know, you need to add something, Hussein. Hello? Uh, Again, we'll go back to Ahmed, Ahmed Al Azam. Ahmed, go ahead. Hello, good evening to everybody. I just want uh, to thank uh, Your Excellency, Secretary General of Aqua, for your great offers and support to regional water utility. Dr. Ahmed, we need you to present yourself since you are presenting uh, the water regulatory, if we can say it in Jordan. Please yes, I am, present I am yourself Dr. and take your floor. Thanks a lot. I am Dr. Ahmed Al-Azam. I'm of course Aqua X employee, and I was happy with the, His Excellency Engineer Khaldun Khushman. Now I am acting as a, a Utilities Performance Monitoring Unit Director in Jordan Water Sector. And we are having three water utilities all over Jordan, Miyahuna, Yarmouk Water Company, and Akaba. And we are also monitoring their performance. And we have already issued three uh, uh, annual performance uh, monitoring reports up to date. I just want to say thanks to everybody and I hope that we will have another chance in the other uh, uh, workshops, which is going to be, I think, next week and on 19th of July. Thank you, Engineer Khaldun. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. It's our pleasure. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Jose, if you want to add something, Jose, and the floor is yours, Mr. Khaldun. Jose? Last call for you. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Khaldun, the question was for me? Yeah, do you want to add final yeah. remarks? Thank you, yes, I didn't understand, yes, yes. Well, I would like to uh, add to the, uh, I think, general satisfaction by all, um, all who are participate, participating today in this first webinar. I think the, the focus of the topic and the discussion was really good. This is exactly the kind of engagement and participation that UN Habitat is looking for. So uh, this is very much appreciated. And we are looking now to the next webinar next week to focus on, on financing, another very important aspect and an extremely important enabling factor to make the uh, wastewater management and treatment in the region can progress and advance. So thank you again very much to everyone who has contributed. We really appreciate the, the passion and the engagement from everyone and the, the right um, direction and guidance of Aqua uh, for, for this first uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank all the speakers, all the attendants, people who attended this. And I would like uh, to ask and request the people who attend this to encourage more people. We are not looking for numbers. I know because some of those attendants, they have four or five at the same uh, table or at the same link. But the coming two are very important, especially when we talk about financing. This will help and may give you opportunity to look for what financing for what you need to achieve your SDGs. I would like to thank you all, to thank also my staff, the time we spent together and you with you and Habitat. Thank you for the time you gave us. It's not easy for high-ranking people. 
to give two and a half hour from uh, their time, uh, looking to see you on the 4th of July. And again, any questions, any remarks, please you have our emails, our sent for us and we'll be ready. And we we'll hope hopefully that we and our uh, colleague, Mr. Kearney will, with of course, uh, Yohan Habitat will uh, develop our report that will be available for everybody. See you next week. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Be safe. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye.